About this, and not try and take sides. Factual. Um, if it right, and you can tell me which bits are wrong. Um, right, this thing about the curtsy. If she, if she didn't know that she didn't know, mm. um, people should have advised her. If she right? didn't know that she didn't know. No, but you sometimes don't know because if she thought that's what you do, mm. then presumably she didn't know that she <laughs> has that lack of knowledge. You know, do you understand? Right. If, um, but, and, but anyway, if she didn't know that she didn't know, um, and she did that, I'm I still, think that's... I'm still confused about the didn't know that she didn't know. Right. If she had a feeling, yes. that if she was aware or made aware or had a feeling hmm. that she didn't know quite what this um, curtsy, curtsy thing, yeah. would entail, right. um, that's, that's one thing. Um, and I, my comment on that is... People, including Harry, then let her down appallingly. And also, I'm not, I know I said it wasn't being judgmental, but she must have been really stupid if having lived however long she has, she really thought that's what you do. But okay, if she didn't know, she that, that's if she didn't know, she didn't know. If she, she knew, I, I don't she think, didn't I don't, know. Hang on a minute. I th- hang on. She, no, hang on, no, oh. no, you hang on. Stupid. You just threw stupid in there. At what point in the life of an American would they be trained on how to curtsy and at which point in their lives would they be called stupid if they couldn't do it? Right. I have seen a couple of times what she did. And to me, it seems utterly ludicrous that anyone think that you'd take what seemed like about 10 minutes to do the most ludicrous, overblown stuff. But OK, I'll accept the criticism. Uh, you know, and it's your show. And you're quite right. OK, I'll accept that criticism. If she knew, if she had a feeling she didn't know, <laughs> I, I, with a lot of things that you go, you know, like okay, we're let, can, I, can I just can I just stop you and get right to the end of it? Because did you see that? Did you see the documentary? Yes, yes, you did. Right. So you know then uh, no. that she it was sprung on her. She didn't have any idea that she was going to meet the Queen. Harry just uh, told her, "Oh, by the way, I'm, we're going to meet Granny." <laughs> and uh, you, yes, oh, by the way, yes. you do know how to curtsy, don't you? And so she's just winging it. No, no, I understand. But my, do, do you not agree with me that she's been let? She's been let down because Harry and many other people should have made sure, because it is very important with all these protocols, that she knew how to curtsy. Don't you think that the protocols are a bit ridiculous and out of date and oh, uh, should that, be consigned course, no, no, to no, no, history? No, 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 no. But I'm just saying. No, but I'm just saying. If it meant that she ended up doing that, which isn't correct, right. um, she's been let down I th- by I people. Think, I think that she also probably wasn't doing an exact interpretation of how she behaved on the day, but that she was rather exaggerating for television. Yeah. Yes, she was. She was exaggerating, right. and maybe that's the bit that people criticise her she for because they felt there was a mocking a, element to telling it. a story. Yeah, but people, are, some people have thought there's a, a mocking element. Are we to not that allowed bit, to mock the, the royal was, family or, or any, any of the? Um, I, I, did, I didn't say you any children. part I just, of the institution. I did, I didn't, and I didn't say my monikers, and I didn't say that you shouldn't mock it. I'm just saying I'm mm. sure that that overblown part of it, right. some people felt, maybe wrongly, that she was mocking the royal family right. uh, when when she did that and in the, in the retelling of it. Right, and but, but, but to, anyway. yes, but to recap, she's stupid not to have known how to curtsy to a member of the royal family <laughs> having lived in America her entire life. Got it. Thanks a lot, Sarah. Um, <laughs> thank you for being factual. Dulwich, Peter. Hello there, how are you? Hello there, I'm great, mate. Wonderful. I'm just wondering how every vehicle in this country passes an MOT test, which is a government test for a vehicle, and Steve Khan thinks that it doesn't count in London. If my vehicle is, you know, perfect... (laughs) <laughs> every year Perfect. for the whole country. How can he charge me extra yeah. for my vehicle? Well, how old is your vehicle? It, it's 12 years old. Tw- is it a diesel? No, it's a petrol. Oh, you'll be all right then. 
So uh, Sadiq Khan is above the government? No, I don't think you get charged well, if you're... Hang on a minute. I don't think you get charged no, if... It, wait a minute. I don't think you get charged if your petrol car was uh, made after 2006. I think I got that right. Yeah. No, no, no. If your car, if your car passes an MOT test, the mm. government says your car is safe. Yes. For our roads. But it, it's... How can he say it's not safe in London? Well, because you surely know what the answer is, though, Peter, don't you? No, I don't. Well, because the MOT test is to determine whether a car is safe to brake and accelerate. and whether no, it's, no, no, whether no. It's go yeah, 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 it is, absolutely. That's what an MOT test uh, uh, dictates. And they do um, a little bit of, uh, you know, what comes out the back. <laughs> they test that, too. But um, Sadiq Khan is um, being why more, is, why is Sadiq the, Khan is being more strict and stringent. You keep, keep asking the question that you know the answer to, Peter. No, it's not. If my car's safe in Scotland, why is it not safe in London? Because there are more people in London. There are more cars in London. People are more squashed together, and the pollution is worse. Ah, uh, yeah. It, it's just he's not above the law. He's not above the law. What law are you talking my, my about? Car, my car passes a legal test every year. Yeah, a test. For this country. Right, but there, that's not the only it's test. Not a, it's it, not the only test that should exist, though, is it, Peter? The MOT is not a London test. It is a national test. Yes, but it's not the only test that should exist, though, is it? Just because there's one test doesn't mean to say that all other tests are null and void. Really? Do people in London have to take an extra test? Their cars do. No, they don't. Yes, they, they do. The we've, we've, already, we've already established that they do. We take the same test every year as every person in this country. Yes, and then they have to have another test in London. No, they don't. Peter, we've, the only reason that you've called me is because they do. I only have one test a year. Oh, if you drive in London and will be subject to the ULES charge, then you have two tests. The other test is to determine when your car was made which you either pass or fail. I have one test a year, one physical test a year. My car passes it every year. Yes, and so what? So, will you be charged in the ULO zone? I don't know, but what I'm <laughs> saying is I only have one test a year, same as everybody else in this country on their car. Right. One test a year, unless you're an unless, unless, unless unless, Uber, then unless, you once every un six months. Unless, Peter, you drive in London, in which case there is another test to see how much pollution There's you... There's not another test. Peter, the only reason you are calling me is because there is another test. I'm not... There is not another test. There is only one test on your car per year. And another one if you drive into the ULES zone in London. No, there's not. All that... It's not a test at all. It is. All that is... Oh, no, 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 no. There's no test on your car. Yes, there when is. you drive into the ULES zone. Yes, there you only is. You one test... There when, is a... When does, this when does this test take place, then? It takes place permanently all the time. D it depends on when your car was made. I'm not being tested. You, I'm being judged. You, what, what's the difference? I'm being judged. What's the difference between tested and my judged? Car, my car is 12 years old and yes. it passes its emissions test 12 years every old. year. Yeah, it passes an emissions test. There are other... It passes, the, it passes the legal government emissions test every year. It passes... Why is Sadiq Khan allowed to charge me just because he says so? You do know these the. Big, these you, are, you do know the the answer to that question, though, don't you, Peter? The, sorry. You know the answer to the question that you are posing, don't you? You no, know. I don't. You, know. You, That's you, why I'm okay. ringing you. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, if you genuinely don't know why he's doing it, it's to tackle pollution. Pollution. Yes, pollution. Okay. So let's say this new emissions test. I'm going to have to buy a new car next year. We're going to have to scrap it. Mm -hmm. Not just pollution. Never mind pollution. Look, look at cost. I'm going to have to buy a new car. Right. Is, are you just... Is this just whining now? It's not whining at all. <laughs> this is you not whining. <laughs> wow. Oh, if my car was kicking out rubbish out the back end of it, yeah. I would change it. It is, though. Is it really? What, what does it run on? 
it runs on petrol. And what, what comes out the back of a car if you run on petrol? Uh, what comes out of a power station when it charges up electric cars? It depends on what the power station runs on. If it runs on wind, then nothing. Really? No, wind's more expensive than anything else at the moment. You must know that. You spoke about it two weeks ago. Uh, no, wind is actually the cheapest form of producing... No, it's not the cheapest form at all, because it's all rolled into one. We pay the same for any fuel we get in this country. No, yeah, but that's not what you said. You said producing. Us paying as consumers is different from the production of electricity, which is what you were talking about, Peter. At the moment, oh, wind, wind the at the moment, wind power is the cheapest form Talk of producing over. electricity. Talk over. Right. Is Sadiq Khan above the government? Is Sadiq Khan above the government? The Sadiq Khan has powers to change uh, London as he sees fit, under you know, within really? within certain limits. Yeah, really. Okay. He's okay. the mayor. What would be the point of having a mayor if he couldn't do that? What's the point of the MOT, then? To check whether a car is uh, serviceable and uh, usable and safe. And emissions. That is one thing. Yes, that, they do an emissions well, test, but, but there are other emissions tests, Peter. You probably pass the... You probably no, pass... You, yeah, there are. You probably pass the 11 plus, I bet. There's only one, one emissions test a year for every car. No, there aren't. There's two. That's the reason that there's you're... There's only one. Peter, there's the only, reason only... that you are calling me is because you're complaining about a second one. There's only one, and one which London make up. Yeah, another one. Two. No, no, there's only, only one which is legal, and one which the mayor makes up. But that makes it legal. If the mayor puts no, it, it into... It doesn't make it legal at all. Peter, what you know about cars, you could write on a tyre <laughs> with chalk. <sighs> around and around. It, it was kind of like going around a roundabout for the last five minutes. Chasing our own tailpipe. Anyway, he's very, very angry. <laughs> is this real life or am I hallucinating does that to satisfy you Peter it's not really but not, re not really <laughs> not really no oh well better luck next time Tunbridge Wells hello George how are you doing Nick good thanks good I was just listening to what Sophie was saying here and um, you know I, I, it's whatever fits in with what Sophie thinks just makes sense to her, I suppose. And she's right to an extent. I don't watch Jill Scott. I don't know what um, Island of Celebrity is. But what I do know is, first of all, good on him. Good on Matt. Um, this is a politicisation of entertainment, just in the same way, that, same way that Donald Trump has done. And this is a health secretary who oversaw us during the, one of the hardest times in the last two years during COVID. And what this actually is, what this translates into, is a referendum on what he's achieved. And the apoplectic uh, way that people have reacted, the same word that you used earlier, is the same way that people reacted to COVID. Um, the way he has, um, you know, gone through this process is basically a referendum on what he's done so far. Sorry, Nick. But I just had to make a point, and that's pretty much what I was going to say. Right, so you think that people are, are reacting positively, not necessarily from what, what his performance on the TV show. They are saying, uh, well, we, we saw what you did during the pandemic. Um, you did your best, mm. and um, nobody could have done any better, and you're all right by us. Exactly. So he uh, fell in love with a woman. Which I, I watched one episode. I watched about ten minutes of it, I think. And he said that he fell in love with a woman. And what is wrong is um, the virus, not the the problem is the virus, not the people that are trying to solve it. Right. Do you know what I mean? Well, I, I know what you mean. I wonder if people will agree with you. Um, let's see. Thanks, George. Christchurch, Philip. Hello, Philip. Well, I've I've got no complaints about Brexit. It's wonderful. I'm earning more money. I'm, uh, you ha I've you never have, been happier. You have more money? Yeah. In, in, how did you get more money? Well, my, there's less competition for workers. There's less, less people. 
There's less competition for what kind of workers? Well, I'm, I drive taxis. And you've got more money now? Yeah, because there's less drivers. Right. So, I'm happy. <laughs> and also, I've noticed there's no, there's no shortage of goods in the shops. That's a myth. Right. You... I, I go in the local supermarket. There's, there's plenty of stuff on the shelves. It's all, it's all nonsense. And all this YouGov poll, who do they ask? A representative... I mean, a people repres on... They didn't ask me. So, you know, this YouGov poll, how do they know how accurate that is? Well, they do it for a living, and it wasn't just one poll, and it wasn't just one company. It's, uh, you know, th that is... Uh, re uh, reflected in every poll that asks people whether they think we were right or wrong to leave the European Union. And well, I've, I've got no complaints, so right. if it was another referendum tomorrow, I'd be exactly the same boat. Right, but so, you've so got you, to give you're Brexit the... time. It takes about 10, 10, 20 years to measure the effectiveness of it. You <laughs> can't just do it in two years after we've had a major cr financial crisis caused by Covid. Uh, well, I think you can, because everybody had a financial crisis caused by Covid. Only we Yeah, well, you Brexit. can't blame that all on Brexit. That's I'm, totally unfair. I'm, Brexit hasn't I'm been not, given a chance. I'm not blaming any of it on Brexit. I'm specifically saying that all countries had the same problem with Covid. Only we have uh, uh, launched into an act of self-harm with Brexit. Well, it hasn't harmed me, so... Well, so I guess that's all right then. <laughs> the uh, the very embodiment of I'm all right, Jack. Thanks, Philip. He's happy. Eltham, hello, Ian. Yeah, hi. It's Rick Parfit, anyway. Lo yeah, that's Rick. Uh, pa yeah, OK. Rick Parfit. Rick yeah, Parfit, right. Parfit. There it is. Well done. Um, yeah, so with regards to the lady we've talking about left and right hand side of the uh, exhaust, it doesn't matter. It's going in the atmosphere. Yeah. Um, and that's what you're going to get. Right up but your nose. The, exactly. Yeah, it, it's, it's immaterial. The, the long and the short of it is money. Okay? So... Money? The, the, guy, the guy was right. Uh, Which one? About, uh, guy in North London saying he, he was paying 20, 30 pounds a month. Oh, yeah. And he had a decent car. Yeah, I've got a one series BM and I'll pay, you know, thirty pounds a year. And it is it's low emissions. And the, the fact of the matter is, if you are on a run, diesel is probably the best thing to use because you've only got to step back a bit and look at um logistics and how does everything get everywhere? Well, it gets there by truck, generally. And what do they run on? Uh, diesel. Yeah, but that, that okay. yeah, yeah, but that doesn't really matter. I mean, I, I, if you no, go, no, it does matter. Well, it, it no, doesn't. It, it no. Do, no, you're no. missing the point. It's the no, uh, it's I the really actual honestly. it's the actual pollution that comes out the back of your car that he's trying to solve. If you go back to right. how you get it okay. out the ground, then that's right. somebody right. else's problem. No, this, hold on, this, be, be, okay. So we let's stick further on to 2025. Okay, <laughs> you buy an electric car, hybrid car. Hmm. Um, at the minute, we're not paying any road duty. Right. It's not road tax. You, you will, though. Yeah. Yeah, so you will be. So it doesn't matter. It's all about money. Okay? It's as simple as that. Well, it's tax. Yeah. Government, government, uh, anything like that. I don't care about anything. They're hide behind... The environmental... Uh, no, it's not hiding standard. behind. They're trying to... No, it I, is. No, it no, isn't. It is. Sadiq no, Khan is. is trying to clean no, up London's air. No. No, it's it, no, it's money. It, well, it may be money. money. That is the way it to. Money. That is the way to persuade people to uh, uh, buy a vehicle that is cleaner. That's the way to do it. So it's it's nudging. Okay, so everyone buys an electric car yes. or a hybrid car. Right. Okay? Where are you going to get the electric then from? Start, then they start paying for it. Mm. Oh, we, yeah, we can go down the road of whether you get the electric. Oh, it's powered by gas or oil from right. the car station. Yeah, no doubt. And um, yeah, a little bit further down the road, out of your street, it's dirty. Right? It's as simple as that. But everyone knows it. you're going to go, we, we get the, the electric on, on, uh, on, on the ball. Mm. We'll screw everyone over for money there. Yeah, it's called go, tax. We'll it's stuff. called tax, then, Ian. we got to yeah. pay tax. Of course we have, yeah. And it's just that it would be nice if the government actually used our tax money for positive things as opposed to just 
uh, putting it in the pockets of their friends and donors. I mean, it, I, but I guess we can't have that because we're not one of those perfect countries like Denmark and Sweden. But um, <laughs> there's no way around it. He is uh, attempting. If you if you want to say, oh, he's just trying to raise money, then yeah, okay. But don't make no never mind because he's raising money by getting people to use cleaner forms of transport. So the result is the same, oh, don't you oh, think? Oh, you're talking over me, right? Now, do you trust the government no. to be honest in what they do? No one Never, the government. ever. But that doesn't exactly. mean to say that you can't pay okay. tax just because the government's no, crooked. No. We accept that we have to pay tax, but the fact is, I just would be the next thing. You know what I mean? So no, I, well, I don't car, mean that people are backing away no, from listen. hydrogen. They just closed, I think, the, the only right. hydrogen station in London. But they'll be get, that'll be the next thing. How do you well, know that? Least, it could be perfect because, batteries could be the next thing because you're imagining the future. I get it. <laughs> where do you get? Hold on. Where do you get uh, the stuff that makes the batteries? Right. Where do you you'll get the get stuff that, that makes the batteries? It, wherever, you, it, wherever it get, grows in the dig, world, in Australia, most ground. probably. You will dig that out of the ground. Right. right? You dig that out of the ground. So, it, in Ian, essence, it's in a essence, pointless it's a argument to say that if you go back, then the, then the petrol is um, less polluting than batteries. Because if you go right the way back, then uh, you know, ten-year-old children are being uh, made slaves to dig it out of the ground. It doesn't make any difference. That's not in Sadiq Khan's uh, ability to change. He's just trying to get cars to put less pollution in the air. And if it can do it by by nudging people, by making it more expensive to drive polluting cars, then the, then the results are good, isn't it? No, listen. Uh, is this a one-way phone call? Is this a one-way phone call? <laughs> well, if what you mean is, can you talk over me, then no, is the answer to that question. Just by shouting louder, you don't get to talk over me. This is my show. If you want to shout over somebody, Ian, get your own blooming show. But we're going around in circles, and it's pointless talking any further. Bloomsbury, Sophia. Good evening, Nick. I yes. hope you are well. Talking about Monty Python on acid. Go ahead. Um, I hope you are, you are. Okay, talking about music, actually, I've been playing guitar all week long, oh. but I have brought the harmonica with me Great. in case you want any new music. Well, I'll let you know. Other than that, I think it's terrible that when we've had strikes all the summer that they continue all the different organizations to do this at christmas time because people want to uh uh they've got the message but um they haven't got the message who's got the message but people people are, are looking forward to a bit of a Happiness at Christmas, yeah. and you can't get your Christmas. And you can't get. You can't get and this. You can't, you can't get, get that. No, you can't post, get your Christmas cards a, a out. Postman's not coming up the uh, up, yes, up your exactly. alley with a present. No, exactly. No. Absolutely. Anyway, I have the same problem with uh, artificial flowers as well this year. The same They're problem as as what? Pushing uh, uh, artificial flowers all the time when I always had. Um, r real flowers, and Pushing. somehow they think it's a good idea for the environment, which yes. we love very much, nah. um, to to uh, it's bring on these artificial flowers. And uh, yes. I, I just don't like them as same as the real. Just say uh, no, Sophia. Just say no, 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 no. Just say no, thank you. I mean, good manners don't cost nothing, do they? Be polite. Exactly. So I'll take your advice and keep doing it. It. But if you would like some music, it'd be changed for the guitars I've been playing all week long. I do have the harmonica. Right. If you want to hear an original song. Yeah. Okay, well, I have a request. Okay. Um, <laughs> please. The one I wrote. Please, is please don't. Shahara Ayar and Shahara Zad. Please, please don't play any music. That would be my request. Oh, no, we're out of time on that call. Why does that always happen? From Basildon, a chap called Hugh. Hugh. Yes, Hugh. It's you. Too late. This is uh, Basildon. Hugh. Hugh, hello. Yes, Hugh. 
It's you. How's it going? Great, mate. Mike, honestly, I love your show. Thanks. It, it, it really it really keeps me going for the late hours of the evening. I appreciate it. Uh, what, what, uh, what, what, what should we talk about? <laughs> I'll put you back on hold, you. <laughs> Is this real life or am I hallucinating? Um, <laughs> Perth. Hello, Mike. Uh, hello, Nick. Yeah, I heard you speak to that old chap a couple of calls ago. That lady just hit the nail on the head about my call. She said, w why don't we get these, uh, process them and get them to do the jobs you agreed with her, to do the jobs that our uh, people don't want to do? That is that is the point. We've got, uh, what I think it's a million and a half unemployed. Yeah. Why not? No, why not, not, not because, unemployed. Because we have they a, can, a million and, say, and a half. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. No, no, you what? Well, I just had to correct you before you can go on. We don't have a million and a half unemployed. It's a million and a half jobs that aren't being done. Well, it's a it's million and a half jobs that aren't, aren't being done. But we've got many hundreds of thousands, if you like, unemployed are, are actually on benefits. So, uh, and, and, and able to work. And the lady hit the nail on the head when she said uh, they just don't want to do the job. Well, why don't they say, why doesn't somebody someplace say to them, well, there's a job there, uh, you're not going to get benefits, we'll give you our benefits until such and such and that. There's a job there, take the job, or we or we'll curtail your benefits. Simples. But but you seem to think, but we'll, that's, we'll keep, wait a minute. That, that's the, two different issues, though. You're talking about people that you think are in this country who are just lounging around, um, um, you know, having a life of luxury there are on benefits. There, there are many of them. I'm, many, many of them. I, I really don't think that that's true. My, like well, something of the almost 50% of people who are in receipt of benefits are in work. It's just that the work that they do pays so little that they're, they're, they're virtually in poverty. And there are many people uh, pulling the curtains when they look out and just going, uh, pulling the duvet over and they're perfectly able to work. Yeah, I'm, I'm there not, are many, I don't, many I don't, like that. Well, you have... <laughs> Many, many is um, an interesting figure. It uh, sounds rather like you're just making it up, could Mike. I make a, could I make a second point on the uh, on the uh, people being able to get uh, a place to go so that they can get a legal route into the country? You know, maybe a, 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 a what do you call it? What's the word I'm looking for, Mike? Help me on this. You know, some some place in France that they can go to and get processed properly. Yeah, well, a processing centre, yeah. Well, that, that'll do, yeah. Pro sorry, I'm, I'm an old fire. I'm so, I'm, <laughs> give me a give me a bit a bit. Yeah, a processing centre. Yeah. Let, let's, let's say that they go to the processing centre, uh, sorry, you refused. What are they going to do? I'm going over in the dinghy, and I'll, and I'll be another year before I get processed across here, uh, before I get sent back. What happens to people who don't get, uh, get in legally they're just going to get a, on a dinghy and come across. Well, again, it sounds like you're just making it up because you, you don't know if that's true at all. I mean, presumably if they get refused, then uh, there would be some ramifications to that refusal. They wouldn't just be left standing there in France. I mean, that's the reason that I think we're being persuaded to spend something like £60 million a year to help the French out, to help us out to secure our borders. Which we, which was uh, supposed to have been uh, done and dusted once we left the EU. What's the big to do, people? Why are you so upset? Exactly, what is it that you are upset about in that TV program? I mean, unless in the last ten minutes there is some some like revelatory um, uh, like outburst, I have no clue what it is that people are so um, hyperventilating about. I mean, she did that. I mean, the, the the thing that the papers have been concentrating on is she did the uh, the curtsy thing, and they're saying this is absolutely disgraceful. Poor, if her Majesty was alive today, she'd be absolutely disgraceful. And all, all of that. <laughs> so all these experts, <laughs> they they have as much a clue as what goes on behind closed doors in the royal household as I do, which is to say, nothing. <laughs> Oh, well, Her Majesty, blah, you know, all of those people. <laughs> oh. She wasn't mocking the Queen, although she could have, she could have been. She could have been mocking the, um, the, the entire ridiculous notion that you should curtsy in front of a human being. I mean, what's that about? She was mocking herself. 
she was uh, recreating how she did a curtsy, having just been told that she was going to have to do one about a minute or so before uh, she was prevented, presented with Her Majesty. <laughs> And so she, um, she sort of enacted it for us, because, I mean, would you know how to curtsy? If you'd never practiced it before, you'd never seen anybody do it before, you'd, you'd only just been told that you were going to have to do it. Curtsy before Her Most Fabulous Majesty, and um, you're just going to have to wing it. And so she was just demonstrating how she winged it. Taking the mickey out of herself and the silly situation that she found herself in. I mean, totally unused, un, uh, unlike anything she'd ever seen before, or anything that we would uh, have ever experienced before if we were put in that situation. But, oh my God, the, uh, the massed ranks of uh, purple-faced buffoons just went berserk. And they, you, you have to scroll down a good long way in the right-wing press before you get any other story than uh, Megan did this and Megan did that. Wicked Witch of the Worst. And so they, uh, so they haven't got um, enough coverage. The Mail um, instigated a poll. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex should be stripped of their titles while Harry should be excluded from the line of succession in the aftermath of their Netflix documentary. A poll for the Mail on Sunday has concluded. They've done a poll. Oh. Really, a poll from the Mail reports that the Mail was right all along and the Wicked Witch of the West Coast should have her head shaved and marched through the street while people yell shame at her and pelt her with rotten fruit. <laughs> The survey found that 44% of people think that they should lose their titles, while only 19% uh, disagreed. So less than half, then, of those that have been subject to a daily diet of hate towards Hazard and Sparkles by a weirdly obsessed media actually think that they should lose their titles. Less than half. I say that's a fail on behalf of the right-wing press. I mean, it's something that the right-wing press have been screaming for ever since they refused to take a constant stream of abuse, Hazard and Sparkles, and decided to do something about the constant bullying. But as with most bullies, when you put your hands up to defend yourself, they go mad. 42%, according to this poll, think that Harry should be excluded from the line of succession. 23% disagreed. The line of succession. <laughs> yeah, I think that ship sailed. He doesn't want to be king. He doesn't want that life. That's what this is all about. And you know what? If he was ditched from that line of succession, assuming that he wouldn't want his children to do the job either, that puts Prince Andrew next up. Great choice, people. King Randy. It's what the people want. Oh, fabulous. Nearly a third think that they should be disallowed from attending the coronation of King Charles III. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. What, your name's not on the list? You're not coming in. <laughs> Nearly a third also think that they should not be allowed to have sugar in their tea, and over half think that they should have to wear Mickey Mouse ears in public. That's just a fact. The poll by Find Out Now also shows the wide divergence in views over different age groups. And here it comes. While more than half of the over 65s think the Sussexes should lose their titles, only 16% of those aged 25 to 34 believe they should. I'm with the kids. The kids seem to make a lot more sense than people who've lived longer, weirdly. I mean, I say give the vote to 16-year-olds and cancel the vote at 60. You oldsters have had your chance and you blew it. Correct. Four out of ten voters who watched the TV series said that it made them more sympathetic to Harry and Meghan. 26% said they, it made them feel less sympathetic. Which is a statistic that uh, the Mail reported through gritted teeth because they've been working so hard bashing out the hate on their keyboards ever since Sparkles had the temerity to rise above her station. <laughs> Which is what this is all about, I reckon. And that poll, by the way, also found that nearly half of people think the monarchy is good for Britain. Which implies that over half don't think the monarchy is good for Britain. Tooting. Hello, Jan. Hi, 
Hi, good evening. Jan. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, it's so, so, it's so I think, well, I mean, I, I don't want to go over all the things that you've been mentioning. But, no, but best it's not. So it's the, the self-harm, but... Time, listen, time's I'll running out. The calendar. I'll come back to the calendar. <laughs> can I make a point about this calendar and the... Which one? The, um, images because i looked that up i thought i must oh. go and see i must see what's there boris johnson's got one farage has got one There's oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Wait, I, wait, 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 wait. I don't think they they those people actually are behind the calendars of themselves i think it might be other people who are trying to make, make a bit of money or, or just to you know raise a laugh yeah. with yeah, a calendar of raise, them they can't even raise money you know you get people I, yeah, give, I, I don't think that I don't calm down. We're I don't not giving a take to a anyone. take a breath, Jan. Yeah, I, yeah, sorry, I, sorry, yeah. I don't think that I'm ja shocked that Mogg. I just don't think that Jacob Rees Mogg is personally responsible for the Jacob Rees Mogg calendar. I no, think it's. I think it's. Have you seen it? <laughs> yes. Have you seen him in stockings? Yes, I mean, yes, yes I have. Thing. Yes. <laughs> it's an image that will haunt me for the rest of my life. <laughs> I don't I think mean, that he... Calm well, down, yeah. Jan. Yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry. Nick. Take a deep breath. <laughs> no, I didn't say let it out. I just said take a deep <laughs> breath and hold it. <laughs> I don't think I that think he personally bad, is responsible for this calendar. So it's just so you can relax, okay? But have you seen... But have can, you, seen can, you actually, can you actually relax? Have you, have you, yes, I am relaxed. Have, I am. I'm have you, I'm this is you relaxed. relaxed. Holy smoke. Yeah, Nick, have you seen the idealised portraits of Bojo? Bojo was an honorary Cossack. The Ukraine kind of <laughs> idolised him. Have you seen it? The, the, the Ukrainians idolised Boris Johnson because they don't know him very well. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I don't, yeah. <laughs> I don't think... But they've got him... They've got a, a painting of him as a Cossack, an yeah. honorary right. Cossack. Right, okay. But mind well, you, he's... What has he great. got? Turkish... He's got Turkish... He's Turkish, of, he's, Turkish delight. That, that's that's how he keeps no, his, no, I mean, his, his his svelte silhouette. Yeah, he, he is a Turkish delight, isn't he? Yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Jan, i got to go. I recommend decaffeinated coffee. Sathal, Manesh. Hi, 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 hi. Yes, Manesh. <clears throat> I would like to say, um, for Keir Starmer, I have a valued respect for him and an utmost respect for his attitude and what he believes in and a genuine person. But he is a lover, not a fighter, and he cannot win the next election. As much as I'd like him to be, I, I'm a lover, supporter of Labour, for the last 50 years I've been living. Uh, however, I think when the Conservatives came in, we had a lot of problems. But I've got Rishi in there, and Rishi knows his numbers. And I'm hoping that he can make it work. But the problem is, can I just be frankly honest with you, it doesn't make any difference which party you're going for. In my opinion, no party can win this election on the basis of economics because... It is so messed up over there that no one knows what's going on. And the way the numbers are, when you've got strikes going on, come on, listen to this. You've got strikes going on, cost of living crisis. People want more money. Yes, they need more money to live. But guess what? Government doesn't have more money to give them. So we are stuck in limbo. Well, this is the first time ever. I, I don't think it's entirely true that governments haven't got the money to uh, give because governments can find a magic money tree whenever they like. That's the nature of uh, being in government. No, you, you, no, Nick. But Nick, it's, Nick it's true. You, 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 you say that, Nick. They find a magic tree because they can justify it and then blame me up and say, okay, we've done this because of this justification or that justification. But the truth of the matter is the economics has to work. Yeah. And I simply think I, I've got a solution for this, a magic solution, mm -hmm. and it all falls down to the figure of whether you believe in my philosophy or not of born economics, which is print money. When you have inflation, you have good inflation and bad inflation. But at the moment, we've got bad inflation. So that's nothing in our control. 
we're, we're not forcing people to spend money. We're, we're not giving them loads of money to spend and create more inflation. Inflation is caused because of situations which is outside our boundaries. So therefore, why don't we just print money, give it to them. Sweden have done it, Finland have done it, many other countries have done it, and it's been successful. And their, their economies are hugely successful. Well, that, re that really sort of undermines your argument that all parties are the same, because what the Conservatives are doing is that they are calling a fiscal black hole that uh, must be filled. Now, they caused it and are continuing to cause it with the ruinous Brexit deal that they have gifted to the nation and the enormous amount of waste and fraud that has gone on under their noses, which they seem um, disinclined to actually investigate or do anything about. The fiscal black hole was mostly caused by uh, Liz Truss and Kwesi Kwarteng's outburst, which was their a special fiscal project. But the nurses and uh, the public sector workers are going to have to fill that to black hole by taking a real terms pay cut. Now, that's the Conservatives' policy. That might not be Labour's policy. It might not be the Liberal Democrats' policy. Few other countries in the world are going to um, impose more austerity at a time when people are already finding um, the cost of living difficult to keep up with. I mean, you run around a supermarket and you can see the prices going up as you're putting the things in your shopping basket. I exaggerate slightly, but not much. So the Tories' uh, policy is to make things even worse. Labour's policy isn't. So there is a choice. All parties are not the same. Bromley, hello, Luke. Hi, Nick. Hi, good morning. Luke. Um, yeah, you likened the, uh, the front of a... Um well, choice the the uh, sort of angel sort of icon. Only because it's the on only because it's the only car I could think of that still got no, a, 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 a thing on its a thing on its bonnet. Yeah, it's called the uh, Eleanor Thornton. She's the lady who basically the owner of Rolls Royce and having an affair with. But uh, I don't think it's called an Eleanor Thornton. I think it's called it the was, uh, it, the angel it, of something yeah, or other. I can't uh, remember exactly what they call it, but it doesn't really matter. Right. But my point is, anyway, yes. mm. you see, what that does is you send no point to it and the, the car will go without it. Well, yeah. it's actually a symbol of uh, of elegance. It's a symbol of a car that you know has got no vibrations and it's quiet and it's built to a certain standard. Right. And that's what the family kind of do for us. They kind of... No, you know, no, that's... Do well, that. the rest of the Rolls-Royce would tell you that. The thing on the bonnet would not tell you that. The thing on the oh, bonnet the is... is. The difference is... Yeah, but the difference is from a distance. You can tell that it's a Rolls-Royce. No, like, not, not, not from the thing on its bonnet. You can tell it's a Rolls-Royce because it looks like a Rolls-Royce. But it, this, but my point is that it's, it's placed there. It was also placed in the certain position so you knew where the front of your bonnet was so you wouldn't crush it against things. <laughs> it's the same as... It's Come true. on. It's the same with the lady. It's, that's not true at all. You can see where the end of your bonnet is. Well, I know. But I'm just saying that was one of the designs of it. And the same with the Mercedes badge, which is to stick up. You see that it's a point of preference for parking before the census. No. But, um, but it's a sign of... It, remi it made, made the person drive into like the, to like driving something of quality because they can all see it in the vision. No. And I think that if you're sitting in a Rolls Royce, then you would be well aware that you're sitting in a thing of quality, regardless of what is on the bonnet. Okay, so, so you may not like it, but I'm just saying why they did it. And no, you it, don't get what I'm saying be. at all. I do like it. Well, what I'm saying is yeah. that even if, even though it is an impediment to the um, yeah. to the uh, efficient functioning of the car, it doesn't help yeah. in any way. It it's, just looks nice, is what I'm yeah, saying. Well, that's, well that's, yeah, as you would agree with the royal family, it looks right. nice. It, the country will still function, but it also adds a sense of quality to the UK, to Great Britain. People come to the UK because of the royal family. No, they don't. Oh, oh, yeah, OK, well, I'm definitely not going to get into that argument with you, uh, Luke, other than to say, no, they don't come to this country because of the royal family. I can prove it to you, as I have proved it many times on this show already, uh, but I just, you know, at the moment, I can't be bothered. You do your own research, just look up the top tourist destinations, both free and paid, and you'll find that nothing that's associated with the royal family are on the list. Greenford, hello, Paul. Hello, Nick. Yeah, I think like I think like the, the Labour would get more stick if they were in government. So I think you're doing a good portrayal of the Tory um, pitfalls that they're putting on us. But um, I think like the thing about the photo ID ID is very worrying that 
um, huge proportions of the country ain't going to be able to vote because of this um, stickler. So yeah, it's good you <laughs> highlighted it. But what 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 can we do to remedy it, the public? Um, well, leave it with me, uh, Paul. I'll have a full report on your desk first thing in the morning. How does that sound? That's great. That's great. Thanks, Nick. Great show. Oh, you know. another satisfied customer. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Paul. Uh, I understood every single word that you said, uh, just not in the order in which you said them. Selby. Hello, Sylvia. Oh, hello, Nick. Well, I agree with you. And I thought he came across in the jungle as a decent guy. What I found, a lot of them were bitching about him. But he seemed to carry on. And if it weren't for the likes of Matt Hancock, he runs, he did six, you know, they were voting for him all the time. Mm. So he did six trials and he got full stars, and if it weren't for him, they wouldn't have got one half of the food that they received. Right, but does that cancel out everything that we know about him previously? Well, what I would say is, they were all saying, I didn't see my mother, or I couldn't go to do this. Matt Hancock was taking instructions for two chaps that used to come on every night on the pulpit, and he was getting instructions for them. Matt Hancock, it was nothing to do with him. He was taking instructions to say to the people of this country what they could and couldn't do. Yeah, I'm not sure that that's correct. He was the health I secretary. Thought, do you remember the two chaps? Were they anything yeah, to the, do with the The scientists, health? yeah. Uh, but all I'm saying is, I thought he took a lot of stick and he held out. And uh, I thought he was a decent chap. He did get a hell of a lot of bitching about him, but uh, he stuck in there. And uh, somebody must have liked him, Nicky, come in the last three. <laughs> well, we've already established that you don't necessarily get to the last because you, you are liked. You might get to the last show because people want to see you suffer more. Robert East Grinstead. Hello. Hello, Nick. Hi. Thanks for taking my call. Hi. Robert. Hello. Um, I, I just wanted to say uh, I've done some uh, fruit picking uh, <laughs> myself in 2019 and waiting tables, so I thought I'd get that one in. Yeah, but, uh, but you didn't so, stick at it, though, did you? It was just, uh, uh, fruit, uh, just for the, a summer. The, uh, the waiting tables I did, and I slipped into my top man suit in February 2020, but after when the lockdown occurred, by... Uh, by the end of the uh, second one, I was not having some trouble getting in it. If, so there you go. What's a top um, man suit? It's a very smart suit that probably is designed to fit 18-year-olds. Oh, was right, right, a 40, right. 40, 48 year old you, you mean you, very fit. You mean you bought it from Top Man? I, I, I bought it. it from I bought I, it from Top Man, yeah. It was, it was a very smart suit. Right, the, I, the way I, you I, said it, I, it sounded like you were a superhero of some sort. No, I'm not a I'm vulnerable like everyone else. Okay. I promise you that. Um, I was not a fan of the policy towards SARS-CoV-2 at all. I know you've, I've, I've been listening to LBC um, all day today on and off, and I do count the number of guests who say, after the pandemic, after the pandemic, correction, after the policy. We have things like SARS-CoV-2 circle the globe every year, mainly wisely undetected. Not, so we've not just like, got to clear not that up. like it at all. But anyway, that, that's off topic. Well, I've had it myself many times on me, and it, I've been totally immune to it like the majority. So anyway, but just to keep to topic, just to keep to topic, um, I think the interesting thing is in light of uh, our immigration policy is obviously David Cameron in 2015 did warn Angela Merkel she, he was going to lose that vote because Angela Merkel, who was basically, you know, one of the central figures in the European Union, was um, not giving concessions, whether they were joint border cooperation you know on that she wasn't giving concessions so david cameron did warn her he would lose that i but, would just but what, what concessions would have made a difference i mean when we were in the european union we could return to france anybody that made their way from france it's only on leaving the european union that we are unable to do that now we're having to pay france something of the order of 60 million pounds a year just for them to police our borders. I, I do understand where you're coming from on that. I do understand that. I think the, the, uh, the, uh, the concern was that Germany weren't providing the rigorous checks. So they were, they were introducing people in, within the borders without 
due process. Um, that was the that was the uh, concern for British people that Germany, understandably, was you know, but letting a lot of people in, but without just a simple check, not a, you know, just not a simple check on the border, passport, where you come from, how long are you going to be here. Um, I, you know. That was one thing. My my feeling was when Theresa May took over, and uh, and the EU were a little bit shocked at the fact that we did left, did leave, and she made the immigration clear red lines. That was the time when she was asked to get a deal, which no one voted for. The Parliament should have just accepted that deal that she got initially. You know, they should have done that. That was right. their I, mistake. It, we, you you said. To be back on topic, I, I'm not I'm not sure you you are. Um, well, I am on topic because we're talking about immigration. We're talking about ways to uh, implement checks and joined up, joined up European and British cooperation to help create order in it. Right, but I don't really see what Germany has to do with uh, the immigration that is happening. Well, in because this because um, you, if other countries. When we're in the EU, um, and I, uh, there's an interesting point to make. Whenever I visited Germany, I had to, and I still work with the Germans, I had to show my passport at the airport. Interestingly, my, when my German girlfriend came over here, she just had to take her identity card. So there was a difference yeah, in, well, in our the, yeah, transaction. And, and there's a difference between exporting from here to Europe and Europe exporting to here. And the difference is that we can't cope with the checks, and so we just aren't doing any. That's the difference. They can cope with the checks, and so they are doing it, which means that we're finding it difficult to export to Europe, and Europe finds it easier to export to here, which means that we're not selling our stuff and uh, buying more of their stuff. South Woodford, hello, Ian. Hi, Nick. You've just sort of said it in a roundabout way, what I was trying to get across to David Lammy to say, but I couldn't get on. Labour keeps saying to the, to, to the Conservatives, oh, we would do this or we would do that, but they don't actually say how they're going to afford to give the pay rises. To the, to the nurses, I'd give them anything they wanted. But to some of the other company unions, there isn't the money in the pot, and I think this well, is... Well, what... there is. There is no such thing as a pot. They can, they can magic money out of thin air for whatever they, uh, whatever they choose. Right, but the point is, at one point or the other, it's still got to be paid for, correct? Well, it has to be paid for, but, but government can just... As we know from the... Uh, c having gone through COVID, the government can just magic billions, hundreds of billions of pounds yeah. out of, th out That's of right. thin air. You've got, pay for you it got later. a credit card with an unlimited well, credit it, it's, thing. It's not, it's not a credit card, but anyway, go on. Yeah, but what I'm saying to you is, maybe Streeting has actually admitted for the first time what the, the Conservatives have been saying. At the moment, we can't print any more money. We can't. We can't just because basically all that will mean is, yes... We print that, we've, somewhere along the line, the prices have got to go up in the streets. So basically, the unions will want more money. The individuals will want more money, which means the prices will go up. So it's just a vicious circle. Well, it's only, it's only a vicious circle if the money ends up in the wrong hands. I mean, if, if the money goes to people who need it, then they will spend it and they will pay tax on it. And the people that they spend it with will pay tax on it. And people will pay VAT on it. And they will just go around in a virtuous circle rather than what we had with COVID is they, they magic hundreds of billions of pounds out the end. It just disappeared. Nobody knows where it is. Well, well you can yeah, guess where it is, but it's not, it's not in the pockets of ordinary, hard-working people, uh, which is, uh, you know, one of their favourite phrases. Yeah, but it's, it's still, I, th I think for the first time, it's beginning to, as you say, that Corbyn and McDonald would say, yes, we can, we're doing this, we're going to nationalise this, nationalise that, and do this and do that. Whereas Streeting and, and Starmer are trying to say reality, not just sort of like nationalise this and nationalise that. And with Corbyn, like to most people, they, they don't trust him. They never trust him. That's well, why he, he's not part Johnson of the he's not part of the equation now. Uh, Jeremy Corbyn. But they is... would like. To, I'm telling you now, if they got their way, they might not get Corbyn in. They'd like to get uh, what's what's Starmer's uh, backup, the deputy. Rayner. Angela Rayner. Rayner. But they'd like to get her in instead of Starmer and with like the newer sort of versions of the Corbyn. That's what they'd like to do. 
But right. it just shows you there is bigger cracks in the Labour Party than there is in the Conservative Party. I'm not entirely sure that's true, Ian, um, but uh, there is discord all around. Let's put it like that. Manchester. Hello, Julia. Oh, hello, Nick. How are you? Good, thanks. Oh, great. Uh, all I wanted to say is I live in Manchester and we have had a lot. Uh, what was Robert Mugabe's country? What was Mo Robert Mugabe's uh, country? Robert Mugabe's, uh, uh, it was somewhere in Africa. Well, we did get a lot of people from there. And I think because we're in an area where renting properties is very cheap, the government tends to shove everybody down here. But we don't have the infrastructure. How do you know that people came from Mugabe's uh, because, country, uh, Zimbabwe? Because there's a lot live uh, that have moved in in a few years ago. Um, but how do you know they're from Zimbabwe? Oh, because uh, we got to talk to them. Oh, OK. They're nice people. <laughs> Why wouldn't they be? <laughs> Well, it, it's just, I mean, they, they've opened a few shops, you know what I mean? But yeah. uh, we, haven't, uh, we haven't got any more doctors. There's no more school places. Right. They're starting to build up some houses and flats. Yeah. But they tend to be uh, ending up in, you know, the, the area of Manchester that's pretty cheap to rent. And I think that's the reason the government was... Sending them Putting here, them there. Right. where there's a lot of green and pleasant land mm. down south, where they could do something, but nobody wants to do it there, do they? Well, that's not entirely true. I think that the uh, the makeup of people in and around uh, London is among the most diverse in the country. So it's not as though uh, you know London is full of um, white Britons, because that's just not true. It's much more likely to be the case outside of London. And the, in the s smaller towns, the more white British it becomes. Colin Brook. Hello, Nick. Hi, Nick. I love the guy that we were trying to explain to you earlier. Let me just run through it very shortly. What he was trying to say to you was... Who? At the end of the day, the registration is what people are having their cars scrapped on, not what is coming out of the exhaust pipe. Right. This is all we need to do is, if you want me to tell my old car, I've now got to get it up to that new standard. Yes. And if I can add the new filters or the new technology to be able to make my car up to that new standard, I shouldn't have to scrap it but they are scrapping you purely on the age of the car, what? not what's coming out of the exhaust. Right, but what, what technology can you, pr can well, you we put on your car? Unled well, we had a, at one time, we had unleaded fuel, so we all had to have our valves recut, and then we did that. Then they put the catalytic converters on, so we did that. If necessary, I could put a new engine in my old car from uh, the new ones and keep my old car if that's the car that I like. Right. Why should I be dictated to by the government for the age of my car? Well, if you can do that, then I'm sure you would get a pass, wouldn't you? Well, then why not? Then why don't they just make your MOT station? They go, this is the new CO2 level. You failed, you passed. It's up to you how you change the technology on your car to make it go through. Yeah, but, but, they're not. but the pe people... The government will yeah, hang on do a minute. People don't <laughs> only drive in London, though. If my MOT... If my car passes its MOT in London, but I decide to move to, I don't know, Chelmsford then there might be um, no requirement for uh, uh, you know, emissions in Chelmsford, so I will have scrapped my car for no reason. Do you really think the government's going to let you move to Chelmsford and not put it up again very shortly because they want to change the whole technology over to a new idea? It's like the reinvention of the car. No, that's, now everybody's that's, got to buy a Nick, new one. Nick, so, Nick, that yeah, is a, yeah. it's a silly thing to say. Do I think that the government will allow me to move to Chelmsford? No, no, no. It's not the, st <laughs> no, it's not the stopping you going there. It's stopping you not having the restrictions put on you right. later on well, in Chelmsford. In, in some area, in some areas you can't you 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 can't because they have um ULES zones in other cities as well uh, sure. but the the best way to do it is to surely just charge people they're not saying you've got to scrap your car it just costs you but some people well, my, let's give an example my son at the moment um he's got five children they both have to drive because he works nights she got the kids to run into school all the time so they never their time is marrying up how are they going to buy two new cars next year again you don't have to buy a new car you can just pay the charge 
that they can't afford to pay their charge. Everybody, as you know, is going to be going through the roof now on all the bills and all the other restrictions are being dumped on us from a great height. They've got two cars and five children. Yeah, they've also taken on one of my daughters uh, because of uh, a care order. So uh, that's how they ended up with five. So uh, they've got restrictions coming in from all sides. But right. they, you can't help each other. Like right. I'm saying, at the end of the day, the restriction be, should be on what's coming out of the exhaust, not what's on the front of the registration plate. Well, it's just an easier way for them to do it, I suppose. I mean, rather than to check everybody's exhaust pipe over and above what the uh, MOT decides. I don't know, Nick. It's <laughs> They're just trying to um, save lives. Something of the order of 40,000, 50,000 people die because of the quality of air in this country every year. I mean, if that was forty or 50,000 people in a uh, commercial airliner that was dying every year because they fell out the sky, then they'd do something about it. And the cost of doing something about it would be levied onto the consumer. Now, you could rail against that as well. But, you know, eventually we, we've got to pay. If you want to clean up the place, then it's going to cost. But um, anyway, Nick, I, uh, I hear your uh, furious anger. <laughs> and I'll put it in my, uh, my furious anger file. Got nothing to do with me. It's not my fault. Chelsea. Hello, Mark. Uh, hi there. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, Mark. Uh, Henry, okay, well, I'm going to agree and disagree on some things because it'd be very boring if we all just agreed, right? Wouldn't it? Now, okay, so we, I touched on this a while back when I spoke to you and you were a bit surprised. I said, I've been gay crashing a supposed gentleman's club in Pall Mall for years because it's £2.50 a pint cheaper than the pub. And you were surprised when I told you that's a registered charity. I, well, I find it surprising on a large uh, number of uh, levels. First, that you could gate crash a club. How do you get you in? Wear a tie, you wear a tie and say hello. Now, the thing yeah, is... Yeah, but I've, been to, I, I've not been to a club in Pall Mall, but I've been to one of these... Uh, one of these sort of media clubs that are all about the place. I, I'm not a member, but I know someone who is, and they want to know who you are, who you're meeting, what time you're meeting them, yeah. and uh, otherwise you do not yeah. pass go. Well, I'm digressing now. You see, in the words of Banana Rama, it's not what you do, it's the way that well, you do it. The way that you do it, right. And, and the other yeah, thing I'm surprised you. about is that beer is £2.50 cheaper. Booze. Because my experience is that they, these clubs which charge an arm and a leg to be a member, they, they don't actually give you a discount on food and and uh, booze at all. In fact, uh, the reverse is true. I, I don't know why anybody would go to one. Well, I end up, if, whether you're a member or not, you end up paying a lot less than the pub. It's cheaper. Well, Oysters, pints. I find you, that you, can very, I, can I say very, national liberal club? very hard can I say to believe. Caledonian club? Yeah, you said that. Well, it, it, it's on their website. So you can, I mean, they don't advertise their menu on their website. Right. But anyway. Pointless, okay, so pointless looking up then, isn't it? It's on their yeah, website. It's not on their website. You're saying, I, you're saying I'm fibbing and I'm saying... No, I'm, I'm saying I am surprised, I that's all, because I, these clubs aren't really in the business of uh, giving their members a discount or, or even a seat. I mean, the ones that I go to, it's just absolutely mystifying to me why anybody would pay to be a member of them. I mean, when I say I go to, like once a year, somebody, like a friend who is a member, will invite me in. And there's never anywhere to sit. There's nowhere. At the, there's never anywhere to sit. There's the place is absolutely rammed full corner. of people. And um, they're uncomfortable and they're loud and they're what? too, too expensive. You, you, you try the National Liberal or the Caledonian. I'm not a member, to... Mark. You don't need to be. Of you course you do. Rubbish. And, anyway, but this is what I was going to disagree about, is uh, if, if Sir Keir gets on with this, it's going to take, I would have thought, decades for it to start coming to some fruition. It? But I, what I, is? The, the, the concept of taking from public schools and giving cash to comprehensives for... You could, could do it overnight. Just re, re, rescind their charitable status. Why are they yeah, charities? For it, for it to have an effect, were my words, oh. overnight, cash deposited is not going to... Ch but let's say I'm wrong. This is where I'm... I, well, the point I'm going to make to you now is mm. I don't believe it's financial. I believe it's cultural because libraries are what few are left, free at point of use, 
And with a mobile phone now, something that most people have, you can Google and learn about anything. Yeah. But these people don't want to Google osmosis or Aristotle or architecture. They're interested in Love Island and rappers and, and stuff like that. Which so people? What, which the, 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 the ones that have got a different cultural background where the pressure put upon them by those above them, uh, like mums and dads, uh, don't point them in the right direction. It, it, it's cultural. Do you think these people were running, the, the poor were running to libraries to learn about architecture and art and osmosis and Aristotle, but because they're so poor, they won't. They're, now with a mobile phone, you can Google and learn, but I'm sorry. I'm sorry, this is not money-related. There is inequality and unfairness. But, but I don't think chucking money at comprehensive schools will turn out an elite that will match the present elite. It's taken centuries to create the present elite. And it's cultural. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Okay, just tell I me mean, what would you want me to just agree with everything? Look, that's the, 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 the pick, pick something out that what I've just said. Well, okay, I, I have one question. Yes, sir. Are you being serious? Yes. Okay. All right. Nice, nice talking to you, Mark. So we are essentially, if Mark is right, wasting our money by throwing it at stupid poor people. And they're uh, and trying to educate their uh, recalcitrant offspring. We should actually be better served knowing our place and allowing the offspring of the landed gentry from hundreds of years ago to run the show because they were born to rule. What could possibly go wrong? I I can't comment on that. I I I I. I, I... <laughs> What's a nice way of saying you're an idiot? Bayswater. Hello, Eleanor. Oh, hi, Nick. Eleanor. Um, um, I rang up because the trouble is we're getting the wrong people coming in on the little boats. Because, um, as far as I understand it, African African men, for example, don't do the heavy. They don't you know, do the potato picking. It's the women who do the heavy work. Really? So it seems to me that we're actually getting the wrong... They're the wrong people to do the work that we need. We actually need East Europeans. You know, where there's a, a strong rural economy. Right, I'm, I'm not sure many... Is it many African people who are arriving on small boats? Well, I think quite a lot of them are, and maybe African and Asian. Yes. But, um, it's it's different kind. I mean, I mean, I just know that that where African men are concerned, it's the women who do the heavy work. Well, I did not know that, but um, well, they they do, they do. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> and well, they're, they're the they're the business women. They 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 do the farming. Well, what do men do while the women are out there um, slogging their guts out? Well, I don't know, actually. <laughs> <laughs> well, but it's, it's, definitely, it's definitely women. Right. You know, who are running, running the economy, they're doing everything. Well, I had no idea. All right, well, it's been <laughs> educational, Eleanor. Uh, it, uh, in the absence of any contrary information, I'll have to take your word for it. I'm not entirely convinced, but uh, thanks for that. Lewisham, Jane. Nick, um, the one word that nobody's using yet and should is ratio. Everything around the world has gone wrong because the ratio of people per land is too many. And, you know, in England, the ratio of people in the land is absolutely far too many. Ratio? And, you, you, around... you, you mean we've, there's too many people living here? Oh, yes, we but, should have a population what, of, of about what is... 20 million. <laughs> but what's that, yeah. what's that got to do with what we're talking about? Because what, why everybody's fed up is they can't make progress now. No, the reason and that people are going on strike is because they can't pay their bills on what they earn. That's what I mean. I but know how that. Does, how, does that I mean. how is that affected by the number of people who live here? 
Um, around the world, the, the whole world is overpopulated. They're plundering the planet too far. Well, you could, have, you could have said that a hundred years ago. Um, well, that wasn't true a hundred years ago. Well, it's neither, neither, is, it, had neither is it true now. It is very, very true now, very. But, um, you know, the whole, you have to, like, uh, as James O'Brien, like a world's gone wrong, it's gone more wrong. It just gets worse every day. Um, these strikes, <laughs> um, you know, you've... The, well, it does get worse every day. Well, not in my Since experience. Things, things seem to be getting better every day, but OK. Well, oh, they might for you, Nick. No, no, they wouldn't even for you because you're surrounded by people that are upset. Well, people right, are so people are upset. People are upset because their work does not pay them an amount wh which they that. can yeah, which they can live true. on. It pays them just about enough to exist on. But what's what kind of life is that? Oh, too true. It's it's all systems gone wrong completely. And like the nurses, they should just give them the money. That's my opinion. You know, don't mess around. You know, they went all through that in in the COVID. That was horrendous. You know what I mean? They've um, Peter Hitchens wrote about how the mm. government is wasting our money now. Uh, you know, I read about that. You can read it yourself. Uh, no, that's so okay. So they're wasting all the they're wasting all this money. You know, all around. Just give the nurses what they what they need and what they deserve. Right. Well, you're not alone there. There's um, an. The various polls that have come out, one of which was um, an opinion poll, and the question was, the government has said that it will only increase salaries for public sector workers by the amount recommended by the pay review bodies, which is lower than the current rate of inflation, and not negotiate with unions on pay. They asked, do you think the government should negotiate on pay, even if that means having to pay higher than the recommendations of the pay review bodies? 50% of those that expressed a preference agreed with that. Only 23% said that the government should not negotiate with unions on pay and stick to the recommendations set out by the pay review bodies. 7% said neither, which is an odd thing. How can you have neither? Uh, and 20% said they just to flat out didn't know. So twice as many people, in fact more than twice as many people, think that not just for nurses, but we're talking about public sector workers, pretty much all of the people that are going on strike right now, the public are behind them, which makes it even more curious that Rishi Sunak thinks that it's to his political benefit to stoke some kind of class war, to um, basically assume that the public are on his side. I don't think they are. Feltham, Ian. Uh, hi, Nick. Ian. Uh I'm just a bit concerned about this pylon oh, no. uh, for Susan Hussey, this lady in waiting. Oh, yes. Because I don't think all the facts... No, I know all the facts haven't come out, because this lady calls herself Ngozi Fulani, uh, and the Fulani people... Are she, calls, she calls herself. Yes. You mean she's called... Her real, her real name is Marlene Headley. Right. And she comes from Willesden. Yeah. But where's she and from? She, <laughs> exactly, exactly, Wilston. Anyway, um, the charity she runs, Sister Space, is supposed to speak up for black and Caribbean ladies who are victims of domestic violence. Right. But I don't recall her mentioning it once. Mentioning what but once? To me, about the victims and the charities she's supposed to represent. To well, me, you, that's you, a red flag. You don't recall her saying it? In, in what... No. Uh, why, why would she be because mentioning if, it? Because if you are representing people who are vulnerable in a charity, you say, I don't want to talk about me, I want to talk about these people who, who I'm working on behalf of, but she's never said that. Right, but that was a different issue. She was describing the treatment mm -hmm. that she'd got at the hands of somebody who was uh, higher up in the royal family household. No, you would use every opportunity to speak up for those people who were vulnerable. No, that's, were, that's, were... that's not what she was talking about at that particular time, which is why the press reported that story, because if she had said what she did, that wouldn't be a story, because we knew that already. That's why she was there. No, you would steer that to that conversation. And further... No, no, yeah. no you wouldn't, because that's not yes, what... Yes, you she... would. No, yes, you Ian, would. Ian, 
Yes, you would. Okay. Well, you can say, yes, you would, if you like, and you can say it until you're blue in the face, but it doesn't make it so. Where did that come from? Blimey. Um, some people are just uh, so desperate to, um, I don't know, feel superior. I guess that's what it is. To deny the existence of uh, a racist thought in this country, because why? They see it in themselves and they don't want to acknowledge its existence. Very curious. But it came out of the blue. And um, it, uh, and that's where it has now disappeared back into. Let's wave it a, uh, a cheery bye-bye. Bye-bye. And uh, wish you all the best. Uh, Orpington, hello, Gavin. Hi, Nick. Uh, uh, sorry. Um, first of all, uh, I wanted to apologise uh, to the person who uh, uh, took my call earlier on. I was uh, ranting and waving about the Sadiq <laughs> uh, Carter's... Uh, I am very uh, sorry uh, that I screwed up. Yes, you're very sorry. Totally screw- I mean, I am so sorry. You just don't know how sorry I am. I'm sorry. He's, he's just a functionary. He only works here. He's not responsible for this show. Carry I on. I just wanted to apologise to him anyway. But, yes. Uh, uh, my point is, um, uh, originally I was angry at uh, Sadiq Khan's choice because my, uh, I own a, uh, a, a 52 plate uh, Nissan Amera, uh, which has just passed its uh, MOT mm. three weeks ago. And now, when, when you say, now, a f- hang on, when you say a 52 plate, what year is that? Uh, 2002. Uh, 2002, is it 2003? 2002. Uh, oh, yes. no, you fail. I uh, know, uh, but, uh, but um, yeah, uh, so it, uh, obviously it, it means that the uh, MOT is going to go uh, right into the... Uh, <laughs> the uh, well, it may the, pass the uh, MOT, but you just won't be able to drive it in London, that's all, because of the uh, well, filth uh, that comes well, out the back of it. Well, it is Orpington. Uh, they they can't uh, extend it to there. Yes. Uh, uh, but uh, so uh, I'm going to have to pay uh, twelve pound fifty to use it to work. But, I guess uh, so. Yeah. But um, you are just being encouraged point, to go clean. That's all. Or well, cleaner. My point is, Nick. Sorry. Uh, my point is. Um, uh, Quite frankly, some of or quite a lot of uh, people who uh, sort of like rely on their cars, the NHS who can't afford uh, uh, like uh, modern cars, care workers and everything else, hmm. how are they going to cope, quite frankly? Well, quite frankly, <laughs> uh, there's probably very few people who own a car as old as you. I mean, apart, right. apart, okay. from, apart from me, there's right. very few other people that, are, that own a car as old as you. Okay. Right. And right. I do know that when you drive behind an old car, even new, newish ones sometimes, but if you drive behind an old one, it right. is like driving in a cloud of, uh, of, of just the worst air. And so, right. sometimes I do find myself stopping the car and letting other cars go by me so they can be behind that car and sort of dissipate the smoke that's coming out the back of it. Yeah, but mine is a smoker, mate. My, mine's not smoker. It's past emissions. I mean, like, I, I oh work my God. in the trade. Here we I go. Here the... we go again. It passed the emissions of one test, but not another. Yeah. I work in the trade. and What uh, trade? Uh, in the motor trade, and uh, the emissions are all balanced on... You the work air. in the motor trade, and you can't yeah. afford to get a newer car? No, I can't. No, no. no. What, what do you do in the motor trade? Uh, I work uh, for a... You uh, wash them? Uh, uh, no, no, no. <laughs> I, I, I work uh, for a company who uh, deals with uh, uh, claims, insurance claims, and they they, they repair cars. Oh, um, right. And, uh, and uh, we, we check cars over, we repair them, and uh, uh, put them back to right, uh, put them back to like original status, but... Uh, uh, yeah, uh, I work. Uh, no, no. I've, are you, I've, are you, you saying know. that you work in a chop shop? Like, if <laughs> if, two no. car, if two cars crash, then you weld them together? Is that what you do? Can I can I mention a uh, no? A, uh, absolutely uh, no. Can I, can I Wh- mention whatever it is a, that you were about to mention? The answer is no, 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 no. No. Uh, DLG. <laughs> 
<laughs> How many times did I say no? And he went and did it anyway. Anyway, good uh, good work there, uh, Gavin. Wish you all the best. If your petrol car is 17 years old, you're fine. 17 years old. How many people have got a 17-year-old car? Apart from Gavin and me. No one. Staines. Hello, Yvonne. Oh, hi, Nick. Thank you for taking my call. Yvonne. Um, I'm, I'm a Labour supporter. I've voted Labour for the last 50 years of my life. My dad worked on the railways. I'm a working class girl through and through. And I think Keir Starmer, um, I think we've got more chance of voting for Donald Duck in the next election because <laughs> with him at the helm, I don't think we've uh, Labour have got any chance. We need somebody to take over. I think he's not the person to be in charge of the Labour government. Um, there's two or three other people there that would um, be much better. He's just not the right person. I, uh, he's uh, all th We've had 12 years of Tory uh, disgusting govern governing, and I think, just think it's time for a change. But I don't think Keir Starmer is the person to take over. Um, I just, I just think he's uh, he's not the right person. I think when you listen to him, he's he sat on the fence all through when we had COVID and what was going on. He, he, he just, just. I just don't think he's the right person, uh, and I just, I just don't think it's, it's going to happen. Uh, and I'm really sad that we've got to this situation where um, we've got no one at the helm. Uh, uh, he's, he's just not the right person. I'm sorry. Well, was the previous incumbent more to your taste, Jeremy Corbyn? No, no, no. I, I, no, I was never a Jeremy Corbyn person. Um, but I, I just think he needs to, I don't know, I, I think when you listen to the likes of West Streeting or Rachel Reeves, they've got a lot more to, to give than, than what he has. I think he's, I think sometimes when he speaks, he's more of a Tory than what the Tories are. He just comes across as, um, I, I just don't know, I just, I, 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 Although I'm a Labour supporter, I don't think I could ever vote for him. Do you think that part of the thinking of um, making him the leader in the first place was to not frighten away those that might uh, consider voting Conservative? I mean, they, they wouldn't vote for Jeremy Corbyn or anybody like him because, uh, you know, people will start shouting about socialism and uh, apparently people think that that's a bad thing. Um, uh, you know, spreading wealth around is a bad thing, uh, which seems bizarre. But um, in, in order to uh, yeah, not frighten the horses, as it were, they have uh, somebody who is somewhat uh, timid. He doesn't make any sudden moves. You're not well, concerned it, 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 in his company. It, it, well, I, ju I just find him, he's just not, he's not up for the working class people. I mean, my, my, as I say, my dad worked on the railways for 40 years. He was a track relayer. My late husband worked at British Airways. He, he was a trade unionist and he stood up for the rights of, you know, the, of the working class people. Whereas, uh, Keir Starmer, he, he, you know, he's not supporting the, like the, the, uh, the train strikers or, you know, the, uh, anyone. He's not, he's not there as what I would call a proper Labour, uh, a Labour person. Right. I, I would, just, would you have said that, um, uh, Tony Blair was a proper Labour person? Uh, prob probably not in that respect, mm. but he, he had something about uh, Tony Blair. He had something about him, whereas Keir Starmer, I just don't think, has, has got anything going for him. He's got no charisma, no personality. And, uh, and as I said before, I think he's probably more of a Tory than some of the bloody Tories are. And I hated, I hated Johnson. I, I, can't, I couldn't bear, and I still can't bear any, anything about the uh, Tory government, but um, I'm, you know, I'm, I've lived. I'm 73 years of age now, and I, uh, and when we have an election, I, if anyone knocks on my door and it's a Tory, I'll probably have to throw a bucket of water over them. <laughs> Best but not I, to, uh, Yvonne. <laughs> <laughs> but 
I, 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 don't, I don't know who I would vote for right. because... I think I'd rather not vote than vote for Keir Starmer oh, at the moment. Well, you, you know as well as I do that you have to vote. Just pick the least bad option. Thanks, Yvonne. It's not to the first time I've heard that uh, Keir Starmer, for some people, is um, uh, charisma deficient. Is that actually what we want in a political leader now? Uh, and somebody who is entertaining? A pretty awful position to be in, if that's true. Fulham. Hello, Wendy. Oh, hi, Nick. Hi. Wendy. Oh, God, it's a, it's a terrible feeling, you know. Is it? Waiting on the phone for you oh. to pick up. Oh, well, dear. I am very, very apologetic. I am very sorry <laughs> that I screwed up. Okay. Uh, uh, um, thank you. No, uh, thank Megan. you. Appreciate it. Thank no. you. <laughs> I'm going to try and swerve around the things. Uh, uh, things. Megan. Yes. Well, you know, those... Megan! Um, no! Uh, yes. No. <laughs> give up. Uh, uh, right, pitch this. Um, Megan, Harry, Kate, William, Charles, Camilla, mm. and the Queen in Buckingham Palace. Yeah. And uh, because I'm thinking, oh, you know, Harry took, what, uh, a minute or two minutes to say to Megan to curtsy. You know, a very last chance thing, wasn't it? And right, so then now, the, the protocol now in the palace is that the queen always goes first, you know, in her house and anywhere, really. Well, or the queen, and, or, the, then, or the, the queen or the king, whoever it happens to be at the time. Oh, yeah. it was the, oh, you know, at yeah, the time, yeah, 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 at the time. Goes yeah, first, yeah. right. Goes first. And then, um, then Megan comes next. And Charles... What, what, what do you mean by goes to, first? What does that mean? Oh, the queen into the other room, right? Oh, right. So she's got her grandchildren and their wives and Charles and yeah. Camilla. So, right, it, it starts like that. I didn't see the curtsy and the documentary. No. But this... No, so ne neither did I, we. Oh, no. Oh, oh, oh. She was just pretending. Um, she was doing an exaggerated <laughs> version of what she probably did at the time, as though for, you know, comic oh. effect. Oh, I don't think this was pretending. Which? Because, the, the, right, she walked in, in after the Queen, and then... But Which, but where, where are you uh, getting this from? Where did you see this? I saw, I saw this on the telly, two things, and but, it was... But what was, what was the programme? Uh, it was about Megan, I know that, because mm. there was another thing. Um, well, you know, they you get a row of people wanting to meet them, don't you? I yeah. mean, they've got their backs to one another, the Queen and Megan, in this example, have right? They? Now, <laughs> well... <laughs> why, why do they have their backs to one another? I'm trying to picture oh, that. Because, because like, the Queen was doing this side... And yeah. Megan was doing the other side. So I, yeah, so everybody would um, shake hands, I think. And, you uh, know, sometimes they get given. Where, where have you come <laughs> from today? Uh, like that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, that's. That's I have not, I li I, Wendy. I have literally no idea what you're talking about. Do you? Oh, right. Okay. Yeah, but you know when they when they, you know, outside the palace, somewhere around there. Yes. Right, and people are queuing up mm -hmm. because they want to meet the queen. Right. And and Megan is on the other side. On the other side of the queue. Yeah. Well, it's not. A queue, yeah. Uh, so meeting. You have to, terribly disappointed yeah. people who thought they were going to meet her Majesty. <laughs> Probably. Oh, no. <laughs> oh. So, um, yeah, so the protocol or what's a given, what's a must is right. even this, this if... Is, this is a very long, very, your... a very long and circuitous journey you're taking us on here, Wendy. Can, oh, okay, can we zip I, right I, I, to the end, yeah, to, to the point? Yes, yes. OK, uh, so... Parachuters you, into the point. OK. No, just the sentence, right? Um... <laughs> Oh, so even though <laughs> yeah, you ha she has to let the queen. You see, you see what you've done there. No, I don't see what I've you, done at all. I'm, I'm just trying to. I'm, oh, I see. <laughs> yeah, it's so, my fault. <laughs> anyway, so Megan is in her queue yeah. or line of, mm. 
you know, and she trots along. Right. But even if they're not together with the Queen, yes. um, you've got to let the Queen go do her first. Row in front of Right, yeah, no yeah. doubt. Anyway, so, yeah. Well, Meghan doesn't. Doesn't she do what? She didn't do that. Didn't, le- didn't let, let the Queen the go queen first? First, yes. So, and I thought, oh, Harry, you could have warned her, told her, you know, because as well in the palace, <sighs> you know, when she when she catches up with the Queen to go to the other room, yeah. uh, Prince Charles at the time, you know, put his foot in front of her so she could Oh, to, to trip her up? Right. Uh, no, well, you know, to distract, <laughs> like, hold her up. <laughs> I, I, I have no idea what you're talking about, Wendy. Not, not you, a, so you, you sure you're not uh, c- confusing it with uh, time when uh, Donald Trump came over and he was just wandering about the place in front of the Queen and, and she just disappears from view because he's, he's so hugely enormous... Don't be rude. ...that it was like a total eclipse of the Queen. Couldn't see her any- anymore. <laughs> Remember that? <laughs> it was totally fantastic. She loves me. I love her right back. Anyway, uh, thank you for that. Um, I've got no idea what that was. But I do appreciate it, Wendy. It, um, it used up a lot of time. Greenford, low Paul. Hello, Nick. I think Keir Starmer's sweeping under the carpet. He, he basically doesn't want another big vote on it. So I think he, he, does, he wants to dodge the bullet. But... Um, He's, he's, he's going to concentrate on his other policies. Um, well, he may have other policies, but I would challenge anybody to name a, a single one of them. Yeah, you're right, you're right. It is a bit vague. You're right, it is a bit vague. All right, thanks, Paul. Bromley, hello, John. Hiya. John. Yeah, I just want to say that, you know, people are ringing in about the, the migration issue and the Albanians and everything else. So I worked on a contract from 2008 and we were facilitating deportations and forced removals of failed asylum seekers, foreign national prisoners and visa uh, visa overstayers. Mm. Now, people don't realise the cost of not only accommodating these people and then processing their asylum claims over however long it takes, it's also the cost of removing them. Now, my point is, we used to hire a charter plane once a month and would fill it up with, uh, say, about 60 Albanians Mm. and, say, 10, 20 Kosovans. Right. and, And fly them home. Now, how many millions was that costing? Well, it's a it's, it's a drop in the ocean. It's a, it's a, a like chicken feed. I mean, the government loses billions, and you're talking about millions. And, and how else would you uh, treat them? I mean, would you put them in a slingshot and fire them back over the uh, channel? Well, no, no, I'm not saying that. But we, it wasn't just there with the charter flights. We were doing them to Jamaica. Lagos, hmm. Ghana, well, you think that China. Uh, people who aren't uh, keen on them being here would be delighted at, at that news. I don't see how else we'd we'd um, send them back, other than by plane. Hello, Ray. Hello, I'm here. Yes, Ray. Hello, Nick. Is, is that Nick? It Hi, is, Ray. Nick. Go ahead. Uh, listen, listen. These guys have hit a wall. They don't even know it. Uh, here's the thing. Um, it's like a it's like a knife. You know, you can you can cook food with knife or you can do something um, onto word with it. Information is out there. <laughs> what these people need to be fighting for is fighting to get corporations to pay their fair share, not denigrating nurses and mm. train drivers yeah. and, and ambulance people and so on and so forth. Right. I've got nine corporations, we won't call any names, nine corporations that I've dug on research that last year did not pay two billion worth of corporation tax in this country. That's just nine companies and one man. Now, they, they said they had a 50 billion, uh, 50 billion pound hole. Well, if 24 of us could do the same research on, on other 10 companies, we would find that 50 billion. This is, this is going to end up in a very, very bad way because information is end now up. getting down. What do you mean end up? We're, we're in a very, very bad way. <laughs> Keep up to speed there, Ray. <laughs> it's happened already. Uh, but thanks a lot, mate. I've got to go. Uh, let's have Hillingdon. Na- Narenda. I'm Kumar. sorry. 
Okay, Narenda. Duren- <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. I'm you pronouncing it okay. Okay, Narenda, go ahead. Okay, I want to say that everyone is blaming government. If they started screening of the health, then human rights people will start running, oh, they are doing this to them, they are doing this to them. Why they are screening them? They are not believing them because they are coming from third rate country. Yes, I understand the condition in Manston was appealing 4,000. You but think you think that right. human you think that human rights lawyers would object to people getting yes, a health? Yes, yes, it is to be. Let me tell you. The, hang, in hang on this a minute. Country, let let, let me just finish country. the. Let, let me just me hang on a minute. Let me just finish the question. Do you think that um, like human rights lawyers would object to people getting a health screening? Everywhere they have a point. Everywhere, if government do something right, then also they have point. If government do something wrong, then also they have some point. Why they are not coming forward right now to help the government that, okay, these people are coming. Let me tell you, if government deport somebody, they will not allow them to be deported. There is a whole Europe in between. Why everyone wants to come here? We in this country have enough poor people whom can be helped. Have you calculated 42 multiplied by 43 multiplied by 52 weeks? How much is this government spending? We have enough people to be helped in this country. You might think that I am literally extreme view. No. First, charity begins at home. In this country, there are homeless people, there are poor children, there are orphans. They must be helped first. Right. Well, it's an interesting um, opinion to uh, for you to have. Have you calculated? Uh, uh, it is I'm, millions I'm, and millions of pounds a year. I'm sure some people are looking quizzically of, uh, at the radio and wondering and where this opinion yes, the, comes from. Uh, All right. Uh, th- uh, thank, thanks a lot, mate. And what's this? <laughs> This is a Jacob Rees-Mogg 2023 calendar. A Jacob Rees-Mogg 2023 calendar. Anybody want one of those? No. I didn't think so, no. Now, it can't be an official Jacob. Is it an official one? No. Please tell me he's not doing it himself. No, he's not. Thank God for that. Does he keep his clothes on in all months? No, April he has stockings on. Stockings on is what? His legs. (laughs) For you. Oh, three, what, just stockings? <laughs> no, he has got a blazer on. Top. Right, OK, just a blazer and stockings. Wow, he looks fantastic. <sighs> this country needs help. I mean, really. Get that thing off my screen. And by thing, I mean Jacob Rees-Mogg. That's what I meant by thing. I don't know anything. I believe you. Bloomsbury, Sophia. Good evening, Nick. I hope you're not frozen up too much. It's 24 degrees in this uh, small studio, and I am thinking of uh, removing some uh, clothing. (laughs) Okay. Well, I'm happy to tell you, I've finally got a real Christmas tree with lots of coloured lights all coming over it. I I got a fake Christmas tree. Yeah. I don't believe when you say that. Um, trees are exuding carbon because yeah. well, how would we be here? Exactly. Right now, we're behaving like monkeys already, but if we're swinging around, we must be on trees. Uh, so, well, it sounds to me like you're out of yours, but carry on. Uh, anyway, I think that it's uh, very irresponsible for people to uh, keep demanding. Uh, pay rises. Pay rises. And, yes. yes. All of the money should go to the shareholders. You're quite right. I used to have uh, salaries and, and shares, but no. I mean, it's the poor people, they're definitely suffering over this, they look forward to Christmas all year long. And, um, all year long? Uh, well, some do, yeah, they're special. Special, special people, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> but I mean, our postman who was, who was very He's happy. He's on strike, Sophia, you've not seen a postman for months. Yeah, but uh, he used to be so friendly oh, and say yeah. who he was, and right. now he will grumpy, grumpy when he walks yeah, by. Yeah, well, after you engage uh, him in conversation, I can imagine that, uh, you know, his yeah, well, whole attitude friends. changed. Yeah. And, um, now, that it, beep in the background, is that a um, parrot? <laughs> or have you it's not... It's a little che- bird, yes. A little bird is flown in looking for the trip. I don't think it is. I think it's a fire alarm. It is a fire alarm. The battery is running out and you're just ignoring it. 
No, I'm not. I've got someone coming on Monday to fix it. (laughs) (laughs) We got that one right, absolutely. You've got got someone to come and fix it. Yes. It couldn't be any... Well, I take that back. um, It can be very, very difficult to get those covers off. I know this to my cost, having spent several uh, days on, on different days, different years, trying to prise that thing off at like three o'clock in the morning where it started chirping. I know. Yeah, it's exactly always, like that. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's always a major problem, the fire alarm. Yeah. It's, uh, absolutely. The I know. Smoke they, thing they keep going off. Yeah. If only, if yeah. only we, um, my recommendation is to just pull the thing off the ceiling and throw it out the window. Oh, that's what I want. I'll definitely give them that rec- if yeah. I, they come on Monday. Give them I'll those give, specific tell instructions. Them exactly, that. exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. Always leads to a lot of disasters. You, you're taking your life in your hands, putting a real tree in your house, uh, Sophia. Don't you know that it sucks up oxygen and sends out carbon dioxide? I just told you that it's not no, right. No, you, you told me the other way around. No, no. I'm not, what I'm saying that. It must be exuding oxygen yeah. because if not, not there was exuding. carbon no, it's around It's taking all, in all oxygen time, and exuding we, carbon dioxide. No, oxygen. Because if there was carbon around all the time, we wouldn't be here. Because the planet used to be covered in trees. There, and the trees were, were and, sending out oxygen. And you wouldn't uh, be here. We'd be behaving like Sounds monkeys. Like dream come true. Definitely coming through. Yeah. But with that... Anyway, I hope that... Well, you that they, s- certainly have given us a lot to think about, Sophia. I hope they, the Opera House is going to play my uh, Shahara I own Shahara there. Right, well, Can you imagine probably, them no, I coming can't. in no, and, and all like the di- different story. scenes and yeah. so on? Absolutely. So, uh, okay, well, I want you to j- jot it down on a piece of paper o- along with all of your other thoughts and let me know straight away. Oh, no, we've run out of time on that call. Right out of the gate. Can you believe that? See, Nick Ferrari doesn't get calls like that, does he? He doesn't have to sit here and listen to that kind of thing. Chester, hello, Jamie. Oh, hello there. Jamie. Am I on? The cha- am, I on am I on? Yes, Jamie. Hello? Go ahead. Yes. The politicians, the Conservative Party, are diabolical. Yes, the, the Conservative Party are diabolical. Right. The Conservative Party are diabolical. Are diabolical, <laughs> okay. <laughs> You said that three times. All right, I get the message. Thanks, Jamie. Belsize Park. Judy, Judy, Judy. Hello. Judy. Uh, you're talking about pollution from cars. Yeah. Why is the exhaust pipe on the left-hand side, on the near side of the cars in the UK? Is it? Of course it is. Well, Don't you well, drive a car? I do. Right, the exhaust pipe is on the left. I don't on the think near so. Side. I don't think so. It is. No, no, no. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> no, uh, my and I've got uh, two exhaust pipes, one on either side. So no. Well, I'm talking about the one on the near side, yeah. which is exactly level mm-hmm. with a child's face as they're being pushed past. In a pushchair. Yeah, if they're being dragged face first along the ground. No, this isn't funny. <laughs> this is not funny. When they're in a pushchair... Well, it is a little you, bit. I mean, what no, difference does it make? It's just a couple of feet. They are lined up. If, if you're going down a road with a child in a pushchair with yeah. a load of traffic, mm-hmm. they the entire walk down that road, they are going from exhaust pipe to exhaust pipe to exhaust pipe. Correct. Right. But it won't make, no, never mind, whether it's on the left or the right-hand side of the car. It might make a little bit of a difference. Zero difference. You've done tests on it, have you? Yes, I have. (laughs) You're lying. (laughs) Yes, I am. (laughs) And it's not something, I'm sorry, and normally, you know, I phone you every now and again, and we have a laugh, but Mm -hmm. this is not a laugh. This is really serious. And yeah, I, d- I get it, but it doesn't make no never mind whether it's on the left or the right hand side of the car. Well, I'd like some research done into that because it must be the nearer you are to the exhaust pipe fumes, mm. the more dangerous and unhealthy it is. Well, you know where the where the real danger is is inside a car, behind another car, because all of the intake for the air is at the front, 
And so it's just sucking in all of the uh, hot juice from the car in front. I'm just uh, pouring it into the cabin of the car that you're in. The worst right. place to be is in a car in traffic. Right, but at least it excludes something. It you you it can't concentra- avoid it taking your children it. in your car yeah. always. Well, yeah. But you can you you could do something, and one thing that might just help a little bit while mm. we're on the whole thing about pollution yeah. is to keep children in pushchairs' faces as far away from the exhaust pipe as possible. I don't think that there is a policy to put the exhaust pipes on the left. I just don't think that's a thing. But well, every car we've ever had has had um, the exhaust pipe on the near side, and every time I walk down the street, I see the exhaust pipe on the near side. All the more reason to uh, encourage the mayor, the, the mad mayor, to um, you know go about his uh, little scheme of trying to get people out of their polluting cars. Yes, fine. But you're not going to get rid of cars altogether, no. obviously. No, no. So all I'm saying is... You can't go from completely one extreme to the other, but each, as they say, a little bit, you know, a little bit of help here would would be very useful, I think, personally. Every little helps. Yes. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe other people would totally disagree with me. Maybe they'll agree with you. Maybe I've been... um, hallucinating, <laughs> looking at cars and their exhaust pipes. But I am now looking out the window yeah. onto cars that are parked outside where I live, mm-hmm. and their exhaust pipes are on the near side. Well, that sounds uh, like positive proof to me. So, I, ag- I agree with you. I don't agree with me, Judy. Oh. I agree with you. I couldn't be more wrong. Right. That's very generous of you. Thank you. (laughs) Well, I'm a very generous person. Yes, I know that. (laughs) All right, well... Thank you. At least you've you've let me say it. Yes. Thank you. No, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Muswell Hill. Hello, Chris. Hello, good evening to you, Nick. Chris. Uh, What I'd like to say is that I'm sure people from probably two-thirds of the world would love to come here, however bad we think it is. They would love to come here. We've got 200 hotels all over England with illegal immigrants. We've got the Crown Plaza at the Heathrow, five-star hotel, swimming pool and gym, where we've got all single men from Albania, where they're not being persecuted, in the Crown Plaza, getting three meals a day and spending money. I mean, how crazy is that? What would you have? I mean, uh, we're spending it, we're spending well, seven million pounds a day. That's two point five billion pounds a year. In hotels, hmm. seven or, million or as, pounds. Or as Liz Trust would say, peanuts. She can lose uh, five times that amount in an well, hour. Well, why can't we pay the nurses then? If we can lose it, we can surely pay the nurses. Well, I, what's the problem? I agree on that score. Yes. So, what would you have us do then with the people? I'd have them take empty out the Crown Plaza to begin with. Send them all back to Albania. They're not being persecuted there. These are single men who just want to come over here because they want a better life. I don't blame them. But we can't have everybody who wants to come over here coming over here. Let's start somewhere. Let's empty it out tomorrow morning, take them all to Heathrow Airport and put them back on the plane to Albania. You know, the the flip side of that is we have over a million jobs which need doing, and they are, as you described them, uh, young, uh, fit men. They would be the ideal candidates to do them. Now, if they have come here in order... (laughs) to earn money, why don't, why don't we give them uh, what they want and what we because want as well? They should be coming over in the legal way. But there isn't a legal way. Well, there must be. I'm well, sure you no, can, the, you can no, there go isn't. and try. There isn't. Well, then, I'm sorry they can't come. We have to find workers from prize. We can't just have people coming over on boats. But where are we going to... F- OK, making... but where are we going to find no. the workers? I don't know. That is a problem, but I think the answer but the is pro- not but the problem, coming over the on small boats. The problem is solved by utilising those people that are lounging around in those hotels, as you've described. I mean, they they fit the bill. They're here. Why don't we use yeah, them? Yeah, but the message will go out to Albania. Every single single man will come from Albania over here, not just from Albania, but uh, most of Eastern Europe, most of the Middle East, most unlikely. of Africa, most of Asia. Yeah, that's I mean, it, there's just no end to it. That's exactly what was uh, per- used to persuade us to leave the European Union, that all of those people were going to come here. But of course, exactly. of course they're not. 
No, but a lot more will. If the message will get out, I mean, everybody has a mobile, and everybody there is talking back to their family and friends back in Albania and saying, listen, I'm in the Crown Plaza, I've got a gym, I've got a swimming pool, I'm getting three meals a day. How about coming over here? If they can find £5,000, I mean, somebody's making an absolute fortune. 50 people came over last week on a boat paying £5,000 each. That's £250,000 somebody's making. I mean, they're not going to stop this easily, are they? No, They're going to be the, more and more and more boats coming over. And the way to stop that would be to make it such that you could arrive here legally. The only reason that they're arriving illegally is because it's impossible yeah, to be to said, do if otherwise. You make, if you do legally, you're going to have the whole of Albania and other countries emptying out and coming over here. Right, you, don't, more you, boats. Don't, you don't really believe that, though, do you? Absolutely. The Wasn't whole, you if you lived in Albania uh, and weren't making a living and couldn't support yourself or, or you hadn't got a job? Of course you'd want to come over here, however bad we think it is here. To them, this is paradise. But it isn't, though. I mean, nothing that you've described about their circumstance sounds paradisical to me. What, it sounds like a blooming... Like it, sounds, it, sounds like, it sounds like a nightmare. Yeah. Well, don't you think, if you live in Albania where you don't have a job, you come over here, you put in the Crown Plaza, swimming pool and gym, three meals a day, yes, plus you, spending your money, you, wouldn't you like you to come over here? You keep saying that, but I seriously doubt it's anything like what you're describing. People have been put up in the worst places. They've had, uh, they've, they've got um, sort of Victorian diseases from staying in the places that we put them up in. Not everybody is staying in a five-star hotel, Chris. And um, with the greatest respect to the Crown Plaza, I kind of doubt that that's a five-star hotel. All right, one more time. Lewisham, hello, Jane. Hello, Nick. Oh, God. Yeah, you're very good, you know. Thanks. But something, something messed up a few minutes ago, anyway. Yeah, not I, don't, I don't know what was going on there. It sounded like um, you were in an echo chamber. Oh, anyway, um, you know, well, uh, maybe it was my insulating uniform. Right. Maybe you, had your, the maybe you had your head in a bucket. Who knows? No, I had my head in, uh, had my head in the balaclava. You must have the balaclava. It's really, really good, actually. Is it, like, is it like one of those balaclavas that Kanye West uh, was wearing back to front? whoop dee dee scoop poop I mean, how stupid is that? He, he put a balaclava on and he, <laughs> he turned it round the wrong way. <laughs> I, w I wouldn't know. I don't don't know much about him. Right. But, um, yeah, mind you, we shouldn't have to go to all this. this is, you know, I mean, we've got all this technology and the boss of Shell, I think it was, mm -hmm. he turned around and said, we're making so much money, we don't know what to do with it. Cash so machine. My is company's been turned said? into a cash machine, he said. Yeah, was it Shell or BP? I don't make no, never mind. They're all cash machines now. Yeah, you know, I mean, some things, um, you know, it's all very, very wrong at yeah, the moment, it isn't is. it? Everything. Very, very. Mm. Yeah, it's as though it's... people are just waking up. I mean, this, what we're going through now, is no different to any other time. It's just that we're feeling it more acutely. That's all. It's just that inflation has been added to the wholesale stealing of the family silver by the regime, which has been um, slowing down of late because they're running out of stuff to sell. We don't have anything anymore. I mean, after you sell a country's water, where can you go from there? Mm, yeah. And a lot of people are suffering very, very badly. Loads yes. of people. I put, I put my heating on for an hour a day, Long. right? And then, and, um, and then that's it. I just... Right. So I come in the door, I put on the balaclava yeah. straight away, and that does warm you up. But you shouldn't have to do that in I this I know you shouldn't. Exactly. Age, should you? We, the situation remains the same. It's just more acute, which means that more people are noticing it. If the inflation hadn't gone up quite so much... In, in fact, if Vladimir Putin hadn't um, gone a-shooting then um, we'd probably not be hearing much about, uh, you know, people's uh, difficult times and so on and the inflation and all but the rest of it. But they're more difficult now. I've never... I haven't heard... Like, when I was a kid, it was always heating or eating, and it was always eating. Yeah. Always. Mm. Well, right? you've got to eat. Then you keep strong. And, um, but... 
not like this now. It Keep just your, shouldn't be. I know, I know. Keep your neck warm, and if you can, uh, purchase a heated throw. Trust me when I tell you. Get the biggest one you can. Yeah, but you can't walk around. You can't do your <laughs> cooking. Whereas with a balaclava on, yeah. you know, you can you can just do everything and, and just as normal. Well, but I, you I bet you would look, Jane. That. You would look fantastic in a bal balaclava sewn up at the front. Do you mind if I say that? <laughs> <laughs> I want you to put one on and uh, pop a picture in the post. Promise me you'll do it. Let's have uh, Wimbledon, Vivian. Hi, how you doing? Good, thanks. Right, okay, can you please let me speak and don't cut across me because I've well, got 16 hours and I'm really tired, right? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> the reason people... <laughs> what do you do? Right. You've worked 16 hours? I'm um, midwife. Right. I was, meant to finish, I was meant to finish at 8 o'clock this morning and had to cover a shift, so... Blimey. It's been a long day. Two babies, though, so it was cool. Mm. But the reason, like, two things. The reason people are wound up is because, one, it's so close to the Queen's death and this has come out, so it's still raw for the English public. Oh, please. Okay. No, 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 hang on, right. And also, there are possible fabrications in this documentary. Also, oh, the uh, other like, reason like the people press are annoyed. Sorry, hang on one second. No, you, hold, second. you hang on. Fabrications. The, the press do fabrications for a living. Where's your complaint about that? But, she, but everybody complains about it. Everybody does it. Right. But secondly, the other reason is we are in a cost of living crisis, and I think we've got more important things to be... Well, well you think so, but, but the press refused to talk about that because they're too busy concentrating on Meghan and Harry. Meghan and Harry are not forcing the British press to devote at least half of their output to stories about them. Bit. They are a little bit. Oh, look. Like they, gonna... they are a little bit. Did you just say that? Harry and Meghan are forcing the press to write about them. Is that what you just said? But you reckon the media... The media do not have anything unless they have stories to sell. They are giving a story to sell. Yes. Therefore, I'm going to throw my teddy out the pram and I'm going to tell them, everybody, that my daddy was a nasty person and I'm going to walk off and I'm going to strop off and there we go. And I'm going to tell nasty right, well, stories about I, this. I haven't, I haven't, I haven't, and, and neither have you so. heard or seen right. anything of the sort because that bit hasn't come out yet, if indeed well, it has exists. Has it not in the documentary? Has it not in this documentary or mockumentary, as they call it? Has it not I, don't know, I don't know. I don't know. Who is they in this instance? A mockumentary. Who, who's they? Harry and Meghan. No, but it? who who are they? The you said they call it a mockumentary. Who's they? I believe some people have. Sorry, oh, my some apologies. people. Right. I apologise, yeah. Some people have called it a mockumentary. Some I people. Apologize. Right. Right. So, all right. But do you not feel that, you know... You can't have it two ways. You can't... Can't have what two ways? They can't have a private life and a public life? Well, you can't have a private life and then go sell, like, back... Um, so you can't be famous and have a private life? Well, no, you can, but ah. they haven't done that, have they? Of course they have. They've li they've no, left. They, they have literally left the country in right, order so to have a left, private life. Yeah, and then they were never not off the TV. They left the country to go. But that's different. Life, that's that's to, them to doing Hollywood. their job, Vivian. That's them doing their job and the work that they've set for themselves. After they do that job, then that's the part which is supposed to be their private life. Right, but then they've sold their private life by doing this, come inside Netflix no, and give us no, $80 million. No, they haven't done anything of the sort. Children, Every famous person on that else. you've ever heard of has invited magazines into their living rooms to show off their fabulous lifestyle. Every single member of the royal family has Stopping. done that. Where, where would you consider it stops? Where would you consider it their stops? Their front door. Stops between. Well, they let them in their front door. Every single famous person you've ever heard, including all of the royal family, have allowed magazines through their front door, so they should not be able to have a private life either. I didn't say that. They, of course, like, but just like Kate and, and um, sorry, William, they do exactly the same thing. They allow the press a certain amount of publicity, yes. and then they shut off the front door, which exactly. is fine. Precisely. They don't, however, they don't, however, then make these... Um, documentaries about their lives. No, 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 no. Not of course they do. They don't then, like, sort of lay out things, as I've heard, and allegedly, oh, paparazzi, oh, we're going here today, and then, they, you know, they're there. 
You know, like if you want to be private, go and be private, which is great. But, but at the end of the day, right? So I, I, I repeat my day, assertion that what you're saying is you can only be either famous and open at all times to whoever, whatever reporter comes peeking through your window. That's that's the famous part. So every famous person on earth must agree to having no private life whatsoever, or you can be not famous. Those are your two options. Go and sell your life then. Go and sell your life then. That's fine. Go and sell Harry, Meghan, and Everybody William sells and their lives. They sell what they can not. bring to the table. Yeah, but do not sell William, Kate, Prince Charles and Camilla down the line. Especially uh, um, when you've got cost of living crisis have they, going on. A cost of, what has a cost of living crisis that. got to do with it? Because there is more important things to be worried about. Well, that's about. the press's business, not Harry and Meghan's. But, it's, it's, no, OK, fine, fair enough. I'll take that statement back. That's absolutely fine. I'll take that statement back. But then, if you want to go and sell your life down the line and flush it down the tubes, that's fabulous. Go and do it. I don't yours. understand what you mean by flush about. it down the tubes. What on earth, what on earth does that even mean? They're not well, they're just, flushing their lives down the tubes. What are you talking well, you about, are. Vivian? Well, you are. Because... At the end of the day, once you've done this, mm. once you have done this, do you seriously think there's any comeback if you wanted to make it like, suppose that something terrible happened yeah. to his father or to his brother. Right. And it's just the most, and, you know, Christ's sake, we saw it with the cream, for goodness sake. He'd already kind of burned some bridges there. He'd burnt he the so bridges or, or the royal no, no, family no, no. had burnt their quick, bridges? Sorry. Because if, you, if, if, you, if, you, brought, okay, if you brought somebody back to meet your mother and your no, mother's... I'm not talking about that. I'm talking Arnie? about her dying. I'm talking about the Queen dying. Well, what's that got to he do with died. Harry and Meghan? Are you saying that because they killed her? Because they have done... No, of course I'm not. Don't put words in my mouth, please. What I'm saying is they did this Oprah interview, which obviously caused a massive load of trepidation within the family. It caused a lot so, of... So what? Right, so are they the not human beings who can make decisions on what they do and do not say and to whom they, they do and do not say it? Of course they are. Right, so what's your problem then? My problem is, is... My problem is that they are not... Use, right, you want to go and tell stories about your life yes. and crack on, for God's sake. Right. Please, that's, that is what they're, that's right? what they're doing. But then do not bring into it... Parts of their life. ...family. <laughs> no, <laughs> so their family aren't part of their lives. No, because they've cut them off. They said, we don't want anything to do with you anymore. I don't believe they said anything of the sort. I think they did a little bit when they said... They later. did a and little bit. Did. What, what does a little bit mean in that context? They said, we don't want anything to do with you anymore a little bit. Right, so if you if you were sitting there, and I don't know if you've got brothers, sisters, whatever your family set up is, yeah. and you sat there, and you were sitting there, and when you were watching TV, and all of a sudden, your whoever, I suppose your brother, for example, if you have one, was sitting there absolutely slagging you off to the nine. Right. Well, I, I don't, I don't, I later. don't when, think, when, would you not I don't think they did the anything of the sort. You can't have watched what? that documentary, Vivian, or that mockumentary, if you insist. They're complaining about something you haven't watched. You don't know really what you're talking about. You're just reflecting the, the outrage, this sort of confected outrage that the press are, um, have just to hit this great seam and then they're mining it for as much as they can make. And, and that's what this is about. Remember, this story is about the press making money. It's nothing else. That's the reason that they keep writing stories about this, is because they can, is because they can and because people keep reading it. It's why they keep writing stories about David Beckham. It's because he keeps giving them stories, but the essential part is that people keep reading it. And in this soap of the royals, like I said yesterday, you do need a bad guy in soaps. Now, the, the uh, template that I've got is um, Dallas and JR. That's why that show was such a hit, because they had a great baddie. Well, they've got a baddie with these two. And it doesn't matter what they say or do. The press are going to keep them the baddies in this story because it's in their gift to do that, because they're writing the script, the press. And it doesn't matter what they say. They're going to be uh, marked out as the baddies. So, if I was in their position, I would want to get my side of the story out too. Because all we've heard is the press's side. 
and the royal household side, not necessarily the individual royals themselves, but this vast edifice of uh, helpers and hem sniffers and hangers on that surround them, Th which I would imagine, I would bet money on, are um, a, a, a nastier uh, bunch than you could ever meet. A pit of vipers, I bet, all hissing at each other. <laughs> I wouldn't want to be part of that. No wonder they left. You'd have, you'd have to be off your chump not to. I bet Wills and Watsit are absolutely furious that they're having to, um, uh, you know, go through this folder all of their, on their own. I mean, all of that smiling and the waving, and they're just stuck there like, um, like parrots in a cage. And people like you, Vivian, despite the fact that you do caring for a living are just up to your eyeballs with hate for these uh, two. I, I, I think it's probably just that you're, you're up to your eyeballs in hate, and these are the easiest to people to direct that at, at the moment. I mean, what you know about what went on behind the doors of uh, the royal households is zero. All you know is what you've been told. <sighs> but anyway, love to just talk to you, <laughs> and I wish you all the best. Forest Hill. Hello, Hugh. Hello, sir. Hey, Hugh. Yeah, hello. Can you hear me? No. Hello? Yes? Yeah, um, you're talking generally still. Pardon? You're talking in general subjects. I'm talking in general? Yeah, the, you, the, you're talking general subjects tonight, are you? Yeah, general yeah, subjects uh, to well, begin I'm, with, and then well, my uh, uh, my specialist to subject to follow. Yeah. Uh, we're drawing a neighbour. What? Uh, withdrawal the Labour. I've never belonged to a union. I've seen the results of what they produce. What do they produce? Disgruntled public. Particularly, I remember the winter of discontent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When the dustbins were overflowing in the streets. And were you discontented? We managed. <laughs> we made do because we were war we were a wartime family. Yeah, make do and mend. Yeah. Make do and mend. Mm -hmm. I mean, they were had. They had um, floating morgues off the um, coast up in the north yeah, because they couldn't oh, bury man. the dead in Liverpool or mm -hmm. where it was. And uh, there were two ships parked there, but, but, container ships. Yes, yeah, but, um, you know, there were dead people in the street and they didn't uh, collect the luggage. Yeah, yeah, and there was there were, there being found dead with diphtheria or yeah, something in the day. And, and there, there were, were bombs falling, on the, fa falling from the sky, but, uh, you know, we were happy. The good old yeah. days. Yeah, well, that's the English grit and bear it and put up with it and make to amend, and yeah. we did. You know, we yes. had a wartime diet, which all of us survived on. We had chickens. Well, the, we ones, that, the ones that yeah. survived, survived. The ones yeah, that exactly. I mean, died. war is not good. I'm not, I'm not trying to say war is for everybody. It's right. not. It's for, well, it's like, for the like military. Boy George said, war is yeah. so stupid. Yeah, I think so. I mean, the old adage, um, was it Washington said, uh, so many people are on God's side, God must wonder how many people are on his side. <laughs> Is that what Washington said? Something like that. I can never <laughs> remember the actual saying. <laughs> you weren't there at the time. Right, OK. I was. I was in there, in there for a year and a half at the end when the V2s were falling over the southeast. With, with Washington? No. <laughs> they hadn't got a rocket off the ground and they were still trying. Right. <laughs> OK, well, this has been uh, an education, uh, Hugh, and uh, as soon as anything else occurs to me, I want you to let... Yeah, uh, well, my birthday's the 1st of April. 1st so of don't April. Don't forget me, yeah. Yeah, OK, I, I definitely won't. Great, uh, Greenford, hello, Paul. Hello, Nick. Yeah, Paul. I think with with this ha Harry and uh, Megan and uh, that um, that um, worker, Hussey, who said to that African lady, <laughs> I think, like, <laughs> I, I think, like... I think, like, it's pretty disturbing. It's like showing the royal family, eh? It's worse, you know. So yes. I think, like, I think time could be up for them, but I'm not sure what's going to replace them. But, you know, it's, like, pretty dodgy at the moment. But I they, think Harry they will and be, Megan... They I'm, will be replaced in the in the press's hearts by uh, soap stars and celebs and, you know, whatever the, uh, the rest of the world has to entertain it in uh, moments of boredom. Yeah, I think like I think like I think like there's something wrong because um they seem to be um they seem to be um shooting themselves in the foot all the time, you know, it's pretty disturbing, yeah. Right. Southampton, hello Simon. Nick, good evening. Simon. Nick, I've got a real dilemma and I need your help, right? Yes. But before before I do, please may I just have a, have a pick a fight with a couple of your callers. 
Why not? Okay. So, first caller, well, the first thing is just a general thing, right? Let me just state this here. I don't care about Harry and Meghan. I don't really care about the royal family. I don't care, and nor should you. That's the first thing. <laughs> right. The second thing is, right, Mike and Beverly. Seeing as we've had a dig at Ranjit tonight, let's, uh, and I agree, by the way, it is quite annoying, but anyway. <laughs> nice, 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 oh. nice guy. No, don't get me wrong, nice guy, yeah. nice guy, but, mm. the, but the accent is needs work. Right. Mike and Beverly, right, well, when I went to school and I was taught to spell words, and I, if I was taught to spell, for example, vote, it would be the, or, to, eh, V-O-T-E. Did, did Mike's school spell it the, Er. <laughs> er. V, V, Er. Yeah. What's a vert? It's a vert. It's not a vert, it's a vote. <laughs> I think that the world is a more entertaining place with the existence with of, of with, lo with the existence of local accents. What does surprise me is that such a small island can have so many very different accents in it. I mean, towns uh, differ just a few miles away from it, each other. Don't get me wrong; it's nice, it's good, it's all good, but it does. It's, some of it's a bit irritating. Right. Let's face it. Um, some accents okay, and yeah. some accents are nicer to listen to than others. Like, yeah, yeah, like yeah. absolutely everybody likes a Southern Irish accent because it sounds like yeah. it's yeah. it's yeah. it's like um, warm honey being dripped in your ear. A Northern <laughs> Irish accent, on the other hand, <laughs> ar, 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 yeah, is a bit like being having your head sawn in half. No offence. Edinburgh, Kenny. Yes, Kenny. Right. Um, well, first of all. I think that uh, Harry and uh, Megan do deserve um, an unreserved uh, apology from the royal family uh, because of the way they've been treated. And what in particular about the way they've been treated? Well, uh, right, up, right at the start, um, Harry was accepted reluctantly into the royal family, I believe. Um, Harry? You mean Megan? Yes. Megan, you mean? No, Harry. Mm. Uh, I'll explain why. If you remember back to the late 80s, um, when um, his supposed father, uh, Prince Charles, separated, not legally at the time, from Diana, she, to be with uh, his bit inside uh, Camilla, um, she sought solace with, um, right, you, uh, you, you, with I, I fear, well, I know where you're going, but I don't think that that's a justifiable uh, well, thought Well, let's put hold. it this way. Well, let's put it this way. Have you seen two photographs of um, James Stewart and Harry side by side? They are as identical as two peas in the pod. Well, that, no, that, which is proof of uh, nothing at all, and I, I don't detect any uh, reluctance on the part of the royal family to accept Harry. I think that that's a new thought, and one you just uh, conjured yourself there, Kenny. But um, thanks for that. Did you see what John Redwood tweeted today? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, John Redwood! You remember John Redwood, don't you? No! Yeah, that's him. He tweeted the following now. I did check. My first assumption was this is a parody account. And I checked, and it doesn't appear to be a parody account. Although, uh, as far as I remember, he didn't have one of them blue ticks. But John Redwood, the MP, said, We hear... Now, you are going to think, yeah, this is a joke. Which is my first thought. And then I looked up his account, and uh, it's full of stuff like this. N none of it funny. <laughs> John Redwood tweeted, We hear how the NHS is short of beds. Why don't the managers put more in? What? <laughs> right. Like I said, it seemed like a parody account to me. So I looked at his other posts and they all they all seemed they all seemed like the results of a parody account, but I don't think it is. I mean there's reams of this stuff. It seems like he's got uh, a mission to explain, you know, basically everything about everything that the government is responsible for is the fault of the unions or the civil servants. He actually posted that this week. 
He also said, um, uh, where is renewable energy when you need it? 3% of our electricity from solar and wind, he said the other day. Well, maybe that was because it wasn't windy and it's winter. You don't get much sun and there ain't no wind when it's not windy. I know a lot about wind. I know a lot about wind. So I've cleared that up for you, John. Unless he means that all renewable energy is rubbish because it doesn't work all of the time. Well, nobody ever said that we should only use renewables, but they're better than coal, which he seems to have some sort of weird fetish about burning. But we hear how the NHS is short of beds. Why don't managers put more in? <laughs> because, first of all, you've got to have the building to put them in. And second, and most importantly, you've got to have the staff to tend to the people lying in them. Oh, my God. Isn't he the bloke who's supposed to have two brains? Isn't he one of the smart ones? <laughs> <laughs> we're doomed. How may I help you? Uh, let's ask uh, this person who is on a mobile. We don't know where. In, um, in well, somewhere. Mark, where are you? Hello. Yes, Mark, where are you? I'm oh, sorry, you caught me unaware there. I've been waiting for ages. How are you doing, Nick? Been waiting for absolutely ages, but he isn't complaining about it. Stop whining. Go ahead. Not, not at all, no. Uh, can you hear me all right? Yes, coming very, very loud and clear. In fact, you might want to back off the phone a couple of feet. Oh, yes. I will do my very best. Where are you, Mark? Do you have any idea? Yeah, absolutely. I'm in Warwickshire, just outside Leamington Spa. Oh, it sounds a delight. Is it? Well, it can be <laughs> when the sun's shining and it's warm. Yeah, it's a Not bit... Not right now with the fog and the mist. Right, it's a bit dark, you can't see. Right, go ahead. Well, there was a few things, really, but um, the one on the state schools, I'm, I'm a big believer that we shouldn't have the school system that we have right now. I think it's quite obvious to me that children have certain skill sets. Um, they excel in some and they are poor in others. Mm. And I think when we identify the strengths and the weaknesses, we should really promote the obvious, the, the positive side of their skills and move them down a, a track that enables them to be successful. If you look at the current setup, even in state schools, regardless of the independent versus state, they have their curriculum. Now, let's take maths, for example. And I have two children that are classified dyslexic, and they have serious struggles in certain aspects of math, English, etc. But they excel in other parts of math and English. So, for example... We don't have to go into, spe into specifics. But what you're saying is that people should get streamed into, the, um, in, into their course of uh, most ability at an early yeah. age. Well, I'm not sure about well, that. I, th I think uh, people, uh, especially... Uh, young people will probably benefit from a wide education from which they can then um, pick a pick and choose yeah, what, what they want I to study that. at Sorry an older age. You, but I think in the, uh, uh, about the age of 11 to 12, I think you can identify where their skills their are. Skill sets are. Right. Yeah, but don't, but don't they do I, that? I, think... I mean, that's when they choose what um, higher what exams they're going to study for. That, that happens already. Yeah, doesn't but it? it's, yeah, but then you're you're still in a in a situation where you're still set up to fail. So why why put a child down a, a certain avenue where you know that they haven't got the ability to succeed? Just well, they they don't they don't that. do that though, do they? I mean, when you're I can't remember how old it is, but um, because I I went to school in Scotland, which is a different system. But at the age of you know, not much after 11, I think, you choose what study, what subjects you drop and which ones you're going to take forward. That happens already. Yeah, no, I think you're missing my point, really, but um, the point is that within those subjects, they're very narrow. Why not look at the more of the practical side of the life where 
you know, we, we're crying out for certain skill sets within the country. Why not give the the people that may not be academically uh, minded, but they're very practically capable? So let's nurture those skills like building and plumbing right. and. Yeah, that's what yeah, I'm trying you, to say to you. Right, but, but you can't teach somebody how to plumb when they're 11. I mean, you know, when they're 16 uh, or you, 17, that they can start being uh, an apprentice and learn their skills like that. But previous to that, then I think everybody benefits, or most people would benefit from a wide education, broaden the mind a bit, give people uh, possibilities that they may not have uh, thought about. I mean, if you say to a kid, oh, you're good with your hands, so I'm going to uh, make you a pl um, put you down the road to being a plumber when they're 11, that rather limits their uh, life possibilities, don't you think? That's, again, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that the, the focus should be on the practical skills, but supported by core mathematics such as adding taking away right well, well that happens already no it doesn't you're completely incorrect i've got six <laughs> children and i can absolutely assure you it doesn't right okay all right uh, point taken thanks a lot mark um copenhagen hello paul copenhagen hey, hello paul yes paul hey hey how are you it's i am great to speak to you is it <laughs> Indeed, it is. Yeah, fantastic. I've been listening to you for so many years, and finally I've got to call because I have an issue. Yes, it sounds like you're talking from an igloo, never mind about an issue. Oh, okay. Do you want me to try some, another way? One sec. Is that better? I, pro I think it probably is. Don't tell me what you did, okay. but just let's carry on. Perfect. So... Uh, you know the temperature scales you talk about, um, Celsius being the surrender temperature scale. Yeah, European, right? European surrender yeah. temperatures, yes. Surrender temperature, Swedish, all that sort of stuff. Mm. But of course Fahrenheit uh, sounds like Queen's scale, does it? Yes. Not really. His Majesty. His Majesty's but, but Fahrenheit. His, his Majesty yes. the King. Exactly right. Yes. <laughs> it's going to take a while to get well, used to, but His Majesty, that's what we're saying now. That's what we uh, sing when we raise our faces and open our mouths. <laughs> God bless you, Your Majesty. You're doing fantastic. Keep it up, mate. <laughs> and, of course, Fahrenheit is uh, somewhat Dutch and Polish and German. No, it's British. Actually, by origin. British, British Fahrenheit, exactly. yes. But, uh, of course, you could use the actual British scale invented by a British uh, scientist. Which one's that? Which is actually the more scientific scale of all the scales. It's, a, it's the one scale to rule all scales. Do you, oh. do you know it? It's, it's scientific-er than the others? <laughs> it is more scientific than the others, right. yes. Right, as I said. And um, which one is that, then? And, well... You might need to do your research or... I most certainly will do nothing of the sort. Just name it for me. It is called the Kelvin scale. Kelvin, right. Kelvin scale. And do you know what's, why it's uh, the scale that rules all scales? Because zero starts at not some random concocted zero, which is where water freezes. It starts at absolute zero where there's, it's like the vacuum. It's like nothing exists. Right. Yeah, it was, it, was like, zero, yeah it? It, was, it was like that in my bathroom uh, this, this afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Uh, the, uh, the Calvin um, scale, that's C-A-L-V-I-N. I'll look it up. C-E-L-V-I-N. Sorry, K no, close. E -L yeah, Calvin Klein scale. The Calvin Klein I scale. Agree. Right, okay. I'll, Nick, uh, I'll look Nick, into it. Can I suggest... Can I ask you one other thing? I have a suggestion for you. You mean a you request? You need to do your A you, to Z you, you, index. You mean a request? This is a request now? It's, uh, it, it's uh, something to mull over, let's put it that way. <laughs> something okay. to consider All right. in the great scheme of things. Yes. You won't need to do any research for it. So uh, we have the A to Z uh, of Christmas coming up, which is... A to the Z most fantastic of, the, of, the year. of the year, not of Christmas. Of the year. Yeah. Sorry, yeah, A to Z of the year. Um, you know, an A to Z exists at the end of a book, doesn't it? It's somewhat of an index. Yes, the index. How about how about calling it the Nikkei Index? Leave that with me, Paul, and I'll uh, think about it for a couple of seconds. No. No, it's a no from me. But um, appreciate it. That was Paul from Copenhagen, talking to us from an, from an igloo, which is what people in Copenhagen live in. The stuff you learn on this show. Hounslow, Ali. 
Yeah, hi there, Nick. Um, I like to put my mess, mess, um, message across about um, the status and uh, news coverage about um, refugees. I'm a, I came to here with my family in the late 80s as a child, as a refugee, and I still consider myself as a refugee. I'm grateful for what the country gave to me and also what we gave back to this country. Um, I'm from a well-to-do, successful family, and we employ several hundred people in this country. Um, what I do find a front is this illegal, bogus asylum seekers crossing the channel and how the French and the UK authorities are indirectly supporting um, people smugglers and um, um, gang cartels. And there is a means for Albanians to come to this country. There's a point system if they're qualified and there's and there's within a job list with the Home Office, they can come to this country. However, this system is a direct abuse and it's a front on genuine refugees and asylum seekers, like people like me, even though I've been here 35 years plus and lived here all my life, I see it as a front and an insult to me. And also it's creating social divisions and which I fear in a few decades or so will create massive social tensions amongst the indigenous population of this um, of this country and also second or third generation migrant population. Uh, an example is Leicester. An example is Leicester what? Well, we know we all know what happened a month a few months ago interracial tensions, and also when we talk about Albanians, who are the highest foreigner um, um, prison, um, pop, highest number of foreigners who are in prison. Um, the highest number of foreigners are in prison. Well, I, I'm unaware of that statistic. Uh, I don't really know why that would be. Uh, but uh, thanks for that, Ali. 0345 6060 I have um, noticed that people who have uh, in the past managed to come here from other countries seem almost more determined than people who were born here for no one else to come here from a foreign country. It's as though, after me, pull up the drawbridge. Uh, Lewisham. Hello, Jane. Hello, Nick. <laughs> Hello, Jane. <laughs> My insulating gear is working really, really well. Is it? Right. I am lovely and warm. Yes. Insulating With gear? What's that, then? I've told you, you know, for your head, you wrap a scarf all the way around or, or a balaclava oh. and you must cover the nose and the mouth. This is indoors. What, like, um, what like Kanye West did uh, the other day? He, uh, <laughs> he covered his nose and his mouth with a balaclava, which he was wearing the wrong way round. whoop did he scoop poop What an idiot. Oh, you did say that. But, no, this is serious, you know. Uh, the, the, the world, our country, I tell you what, you know, this winter is going to be bad for the people, bad. right? Bad in what way? But money, oh. everything. And, but two, three years down the line, wow, it's going to be <laughs> awful. <laughs> Oh, awful. Now, wait a minute. Uh, We're going to go from bad to awful. I was expecting you to say that it's going to be great a couple of years down the line. Well, unless um, unless we can build the motoring party, .co.uk, um, we must try to build it really, really good. Right. Well, I've got absolutely no idea what you're talking about, Jane, and I seriously doubt you do too. Have a, I know exactly. It, I do okay. Don't worry about that. Yeah, I got my senses. Yeah, I, th know? I think you've tied that uh, scarf around your head a little bit too tight. You want to loosen it a couple of no. knots? No, no, no. You look. You look at the computer, the motoring part. I most you certainly will do pay. nothing of the sort, Jane. But thanks for the good tip. Well, your listeners well, I, should. I don't think they should either. Just ignore everything that woman is saying. Correct. Thanks a lot, Jay, for whatever that was.